Well, I mean, the, on the camera, I think what we'll do is just get the field, or, or, or well, he can come over here, and I'll pick us up uh, uh, on the, uh, the camera over here. So, in a moment, you'll... to the big show. He could go all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event.
Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, from high atop the ridge here in Wycliffe, Ohio, on a um, rather warm Friday, Friday afternoon into the evening, this is the Wycliffe Blue Devils on the Worldwide Blue Devil Network for the first time in the year of 2021, as tonight, your Wycliffe Blue Devils, or as I should say, Scott Tennant, the Wycliffe Blue Devils. Capital T. Yeah, that's the. right. We'll be hosting the uh, Scarabs from East Tech High School here on a brand new football field. And uh, my name is Frank Fody. And tonight, if I don't mess up our little webcast here, Scott, why don't you come on in here and join me as we're basking in the sun here? Uh, hi, everybody. As tonight, um, the Wickle Blue Devils are hosting the Scarabs of East Tech High School in a um, the, the second game of the season. Both teams coming in having, um, let's say, starting the season not on the up note. Uh, the Blue Devils last week falling to uh, Brookside High School out in Sheffield Village. And the Scarabs uh, kind of, they went down to defeat against, well, I think, what, Central? Cleveland Central Catholic. Cle yeah. Cleveland Central Catholic. Right. So both of them looking for... Um, uh, win number one tonight, and um, once again, it's great to be back here on the Worldwide Blue Devil Network, made possible through the Wycliffe School Alumni Association, as we have the Worldwide Blue Devil um, Network's YouTube channel, Facebook Live, and we're just great to be back, and Scott, great to see you. you know, your brother Mark will be in here in the not-too-distant future, and um, a lot to talk about because I'm going to uh, switch over here if uh, if I don't mess it up, because, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the brand new football field for the Wickle Blue Devils, uh, put in during the off season. Uh, gone, in, the Devils have now moved from natural grass to an artificial surface, which was basically this will be the first football game. But Scott, I guess there've been a couple of. Uh, no, there's been at least one soccer there game. There have been uh, two girls' soccer games, as a matter of fact. Uh, the Wycliffe Lady Devils had games here Tuesday and Thursday against uh, Chardon and Mayfield, uh, respectively. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk a bit about some of the other sports uh, as the broadcast goes on tonight, Frank. But one thing that girls' soccer team shares with your Wycliffe Blue Devils football team is youth and, and some inexperience here. And I think you and I, having been out at Brookside last week, we saw that. You know, there, there are definitely some athletes but this is about as complete a restart, I think, as we've seen in Blue Devil football in a long, long time, for sure. You're right. I, I, I did have the chance to be out at Brookside last week. And uh, if you're just uh, folks uh, checking out the Blue Devils for the first time this season, um, you know, last year it was like a dream year. You know, I mean, it's, it seemed like right up until that last game against um, Norway. Uh, the devil, it's like nothing could go wrong for the Blue Devils. And, and we even talked about it last year in, in so far as that this year would be uh, a retooling. And that is what you will see. So tonight, folks, if you're a Wickle Blue Devil fan, one of the things I guess to, to look for is that progress. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Taking Frank, steps you know, forward. And it was interesting reading uh, Matt Gould, who covers high school sports for Cleveland.com. Uh, about the Blue Devils, said that Wycliffe graduated what he called an historic senior class. And I don't think that's exaggeration or, or hyperbole. That was, in many ways, uh, that was a class that, you know, from the time they came to this uh, this school in ninth grade, right. great things were expected of them, and they certainly delivered. But, you know, this year, there are names that you got used to hearing you're not going to hear anymore. You're not going to hear Mason Bala and Chase Fortcamp and Isaiah Bolin and Tyler Fisher and Zach Estevez and, right. you know, all those guys. One returning starter back, Thomas uh, Wentz. and that is in fact Thomas Wenz, and uh, the rest of them are, if if not brand new to football, certainly new to the varsity level of football. Right. And uh, you and I were talking before the game, Frank, last week against Brookside. I counted at least four four guys who in that first snap of that game, that was their first snap ever of organized football. Right. And they were on the field starting. Right. right. So, That's right. So that gives you a sense of the the, the magnitude of uh, of kind of the rebuild that Wick was looking for here. So. So we'll be uh, things will be getting started here in about uh, oh, a little over 20 minutes. Uh, as always, at, at halftime, we will step away, and you'll be able to enjoy halftime performance by the uh, swing band, who turned in a tremendous performance last week out at Brookside. And uh, matter of fact, you know there was a nice crowd there from from Wycliffe as well as 
um, out, out there in Sheffield Village, and I think the people in Sheffield Village got a, a you know, they got some nice entertainment at halftime. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Frank, I, having the privilege of this being my eighth season as the announcer for the swing band, I always get to be in the, when we go on the road, I get to be in the visiting press box and hear how well-received the band is. Right. And couldn't people stop me on the way down the steps on the bleachers saying, hey, you guys were great, nice band, and all that. And it, it's always nice to hear. They deliver year in, year out. Oh, So, Scott, um, but this year is your first year where you're, uh, you have a new um, occupation going on uh dealing at the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. That's true. Scott, I'm looking up at, I mean, it's rather hot and warm and, and humid here. <laughs> I don't see the blimp, Scott. I, you know. I'm holding out hope by okay. the end of the night. Okay. Frank. That is my, it, it, it is my uh, life's mission now to get the blimp to fly over Wycliffe Memorial Stadium that, one of these evenings here. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, if anyone can do it, Scott can do that. <laughs> you know, figure I figure mean, it out. I, I think it comes down to, you know, there seems to be like that magical drive of anyone that went to Wycliffe High School and is left-handed. That's, and I believe that uh, between the two of us, that accounts for two of us. That's right. There you go. <laughs> so, so I'll tell you what, Frank, it's, you know, getting back to this Blue Devil football team, it was interesting last week because we said, yes, young, yes, inexperienced, but you've got some individual athletes with a lot of potential. And I'll start with the quarterback, number one, Sean Durgans. He's a junior. This is a guy that Blue Devil sports fans got to know last winter as an up-and-coming basketball player. You know, really showed himself well for that uh, Blue Devil boys basketball team. And he's playing, as we said, quarterback for Wycliffe. And that is such, there's a very specialized skill set that is required to play the quarterback in this pistol wing T offense, right? That's right. And it has a lot to do with uh, not only ball handling, but footwork and fakes and the whole thing. And, you know, there were times when it was clear Sean's still learning. You know, we, oh, we, yeah. we were so spoiled by Mason Ballin, the way he smoothly ran that offense. You forget all the work that went into it. Well, and, and, and the other thing is, too, is that there's a lot of you, you've got to think very quickly. Yeah. Not only on your feet, but, you know, things are going to happen in a moment. Like when you come up to the line of scrimmage, you're not sure exactly what may happen based on you've got to take what the defense gives you. Exactly. So it's a combination of like, okay, I see I've got a blitzer coming in over the left guard. And the play's supposed to go this way, so I've got a ball fake this way. And, so, and, and you know, it's right. interesting about that, Frank. We were, uh, Mark and I were talking to Coach Mars Purcello before the game, and Mars said that, you know, part of the problem last week is guys were so inexperienced they didn't even fully know the playbook they had to really limit right. the playbook and right. he said th the challenge this week is that east tech blitzes a lot you know so the question is are these young blue devils going to be able to recognize that going to be able to pick that up because you know when you can obviously if a guy blitzes there's going to be an open area on the field and that's, that's right what you, that's what you're going to attack and that's what mason ball and chase and those guys were so good at doing you know for the last couple of years so that'll be one of the keys to watch tonight is Wycliffe's offense versus the East Tech Blitz. And as you said, it's something we we really did get spoiled. I mean, when you think about it, not just last year, but probably the last three or four years, you know, the, the, the Devils were able to um, make it to the playoffs, um, had a lot of not only talent, but depth um, on, you know, on the team. And, and you might be thinking, well, when you have a roster that's less than 30, how can you say you have a lot of depth? But the Blue Devils did have that. You, you know, it seemed like they may not have had a fresh body going in, you know, um, on p uh, change of possessions or what have you, but it seemed like whoever was there in the backfield performed. Whoever was playing on yeah. defense performed. And um, it'll be interesting to watch as these guys develop, the, you know, on a week-to-week -week basis, and uh, we'll – We'll see what happens here tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, Frank. One thing that uh, the Blue Devils do have is a little bit of size. You know, for a roster yeah. as small as Wycliffe has, there are three guys here north of 300 pounds uh, for your Blue Devils this year. Uh, one of those is a guy we saw uh, play a little bit last year, and that is the sophomore Mitchell Lindsay, who comes in at what is actually a slim down 6'6", 320 pounds. Mitch last year as a freshman was 335 pounds and really worked hard, hit the weights, uh, you know, I think did some little work on his diet in the offseason and, you know, and I think just grew up a little bit too. And, uh, you know, those who know the, the Lindsay family know that uh, Mitch's older brother, Will, who uh, attended Hawkins School, 
was not as big as Mitch, but you know, played with kind of an intensity and a meanness that I think they're trying to they're trying to develop in Mitch. Mitch is a gentle giant. You know, he really is he's a right. good guy, and that's right. no knock on him. He's a good kid, and I think the, the Blue Devil coaches are trying to develop that in him. But Mitch is one of those guys above 300 pounds. We also have Noah Garrison, one of the one of those guys who does both the swing band at halftime and plays football. Noah, a junior, coming in at 6'5", 315. And we have a freshman, Alex Cunningham, number 74, who is listed on the roster at six foot, 305 pounds. So uh, it's not as if this is a, a whole bunch of 150-pound linemen. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, there have been times, you know, we've seen some smaller linemen lining up for the Blue Devils. So, uh, you know, one thing they have in their corner is a little bit of size, and that's going to come in handy, I think, against some of these teams they're going to see later on down the line this year, Frank. And I'll tell you one other guy. We mentioned the quarterback, number one, Sean Durgans. We also want to mention... A running back, number six, Vince Gargiulo. Uh, Vince is a junior listed at 5'9", 170. And Vince is a guy whose name we expected to call last year more. Suffered an injury early on, didn't play to the extent that uh, the coaches had planned for him. And I think we saw last week at Brookside, you're going to get a steady diet of, of Vince Gargiulo coming at you. And that's another good athlete the Devils have. And, you know, it, it, and it keeps with that tradition of, of at least one featured running back that, y you know, on a, on a given you know, on any given play um, could basically bust one and, and, and make something happen. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the plan, I know, there's a, a sophomore guy by the name, you might remember, we called his name a few times last year, and uh, that was Bobby Plum, number 33, Bobby Plum. And Bobby, in preseason practice, unfortunately, rolled an ankle uh, because, Frank, one of the consequences, I, if anyone's been up at Wycliffe High School recently, you know the whole back part of Wycliffe High School is a construction zone because... They are now building a pre-K through grade 12 campus, and in time they're going to knock down the high school, middle school, and elementary school. So that was where the football team and other teams used to practice. Uh, now the football and soccer teams find themselves practicing on the front lawn of the high school, which is a little pitted and rutted, and I think Bobby unfortunately caught one of those ruts and hurt his ankle, and I've heard different prognoses as to his return. There was some thought that he wouldn't be back this season, then there was a thought that he'd be back in the second half, uh, now, you know, we hear some talk that Bobby could be back as soon as week four against Fairport. But uh, he's a guy that we did also expected to, to whose name we were going to call a lot on both sides of the ball. Real athletic kid, good baseball player. So that's a guy that, uh, you know, if you lose him, you lose a little much needed depth. And here's hoping we get him back real soon. Great. Speaking of uh, getting people back and uh, what maybe may or may not be going on, um, a couple things as we get into the game Folks, um, we are hoping here at the last minute to get some rosters um, um, from East Tech. Apparently, there's been some uh, challenges with communication. So, um, 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 Mark just informed me that we'll have a handful of names of the most important players that we'll be able to talk about with respect to East Tech. So, if you're with us from East Tech tonight, um, um, and you don't hear, you know, a student's name called or something like that, we apologize in advance. But since we're getting a bit closer to kickoff, uh, Mark did have a chance to speak with Coach Purcello, who will probably be able to give us a good insight about um, uh, this year's team, last week's game, and some of the things that we're hoping to see from the Blue Devils in tonight's game against the East Tech Scarabs. So we're going to work through a little, little bit of technical difficulty. This is first game of the season for everybody. Yeah, it's great to be back. Hey, it's good to be here. Uh, I'm very excited. So last week, not the maybe way we wanted to start off, but we can say, and especially for the folks um, that are listening across the globe, um, this is a young team. We graduated a lot of seniors last year. Um, tell us about the 2021 edition of your Blue Devils and, um, you know, what we can expect and, you know, the highs and... Uh, and just an overall general look at the team. Yeah, so uh, we're really young. We only returned uh, one guy, Thomas Wentz. Uh, he, he's he's the one starter that returned. Um, so you know, it's a it's a kind of a, a rebuild rebuilding year. Um, but these guys have gotten better every day. They continue to improve, and so uh, you know, it's uh, we we have we have we, we've seen some bright spots. We've seen some really good things. Um, 
We just have to get a little more consistent uh, on a regular basis. So, so between a team like was really experienced last year and veteran group, of course, and then coming, turning it around, and really just having a essentially a rookie group, if you will. Um, do you go back in the past and see how you groomed the guys that were the journeymen last year when they were, you know, four years ago when they were freshmen? How do you go about rebuilding a team here in high school? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a small school, and this happens. You cycle through, you know, you go through cycles, wow. and we're, we kind of we do what we do. We, we we're doing what we've always done, um, and you know, some of these guys were here last year, and so. You know, they learned from 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 that group last year. That was maybe one of the best groups to ever go through the school, uh, football wise. And and so, um, you know, we just we do what we do, and they have to learn the ropes, and they have to learn quick. And um, and they are that we tell them you just keep showing up and and be coachable, and they're going to get better. So with the how many folks are how many kids are on the team? I think we have uh, close to thirty five actually. That's so excellent. the numbers are pretty good. It's good. How many of the kids are going both ways? Uh, names we can hear about and uh, start familiarizing ourselves with this season? Yeah, we have a big freshman class. Uh, I think there's 15 or 16 freshmen. Uh, so we do have guys going both ways. Um, but one, you know, a couple guys that, that stand out, that, you know, Thomas Wentz, he's the returning yeah. starter yeah. from last year. He's, he's playing uh, Mike Linebacker for us, um, which is different than he played nose guard last year. Um, tonight, though, kind of a, a special treat. He's going in the backfield, so we're going to hand him the football. Um, he's going to block for us a little bit. Uh, we had a couple injuries, two running backs get hurt, so um, we put him back there. He's a very athletic, big, strong kid, so put him back there. Um, another kid that's going to carry the ball a lot is Vince Gargiulo. Yeah. Um, you know, last year, even with that group uh, he would have played a lot uh, last year but he ended up being injured almost the whole season so um, he was good enough to to play on that team last year so he he has some some he has a very high football IQ um, very very tough young man he's a tough tackle um, so uh, and then uh, our quarterback is a new player, Sean Durgantz, uh, but he's really come along. He's he's a pretty talented young man, and he's learning the game really quick. So um, we're, we've been pleasantly surprised with him as well. So when you're rebuilding a team, and it's been a while since you've really had to do it, especially at this kind of rudimentary level, what? Who comes around quicker? Is the offense come around quicker? The defense tend to come around quicker? And what's, you know, for, for your group, what's happening? This year, um, it's definitely been the defense. Um, it's just, you know, we, we kind of, we run a, a pretty simple defense, um, but it's very effective. And we don't ask our D linemen to do that much. Um, last year, they, they ended up making a lot of plays, but um, we kind of try to spill the offense to the outside and then let our line, linebackers run to the football. Um, and so our defense actually, um, last week we gave up a, a punt return and then we gave up a touchdown on offense in the end zone. So at halftime, we had only given up two scores uh, on defense. So um, defense is ahead of the offense, I would say. Okay. And finally, Coach, uh, when you look at this East Tech Scarab team and you've had a chance to look at on film and they, you know, didn't, have, they didn't score any points last week, but um, things you need to look out for and things you're looking for as far as uh, you know, scarabs are concerned tonight. So their quarterback is, is very elusive, uh, very athletic kid, um, and he can throw the ball. He throws the ball really far. Um, he's got a really good arm. Um, and then they have a running back, and he gets downhill pretty well. Um, so we, we had to change up our defense a little bit. They don't run a lot of formations, um, but we can't let that quarterback scramble, so we have to contain him. Um, we're putting two, two of our guys, our, our, two of our backers are just going to kind of cat and mouse him and try to contain him on the, from getting outside. So um, he scrambles really well. He's, he's not necessarily, wants, doesn't necessarily want to run the ball, but he wants to scramble and then throw it downfield. So we have to stay, in, we have to contain him first, and then we have to stay in coverage uh, in the defensive backfield. Um, defensively, they're, they're very aggressive. They're, they're linebacker, they like to blitz and, and bring pressure. And so we have to be ready for it. We practiced it all week. So, um, you know, I, I think our guys are ready and we'll, we'll find out. Okay. Finally, this will be the one last one for me. Offense, it's, you know, people always like to see points on the board. And so what, what can we expect tonight? You mentioned Thomas Wentz. Is this a surprise maybe in the backfield? What are, you, what are we going to yeah, see? Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's pretty similar to what we've done last. We did, we've done for years. Um, you know, it's a hybrid spread wing tee. Um, but, you know, we're going we're gonna, to, I think tonight we're going to get into a little unbalance. We've got some big guys up front. Uh, Mitchell Lindsay's, you know, a 300-pounder. Noah Garrison's a 300-pounder. Our center's a 300-pounder. So we're going to line all those guys up on one side and try to just run the ball north and south as quick as we can. Okay. Coach Mars Purcello from your Blue Devils. Thanks so much, Coach, and uh, good luck tonight. Thank you very Alrighty. much.
And we're getting closer to the time of kickoff. We're about maybe six and a half minutes away before the start of tonight's um, home lid lifter with, between the Wicklow Blue Devils and the Scarabs from East Tech. And um, could be a lot of excitement happening here on the field tonight. And uh, some interesting comments there from Coach Purcello with regard to uh, um, the development of the Blue Devils thus far as well as some of the things that um, we'll, we'll need to look for with regard to um, defending against the Scarabs, as we would expect, you know, some athleticism from East Tech, and we'll see how well the Blue Devils are able to um, um, defend against them, especially with a, a talented quarterback that we've heard about who's uh, by the name of Johan Gaines is their quarterback. Um, once, once again... Um, as we've learned, unfortunately, we, we only have some of the um, names of some of the East Tech players, so um, we will be doing our best to bring as much information uh, on the um, East Tech squad as possible um, once things get rolling here in, in just a few minutes. Uh, once again, as, as you're looking out, on the field tonight, brand new football field for the Wicklow Blue Devils. They've gone to artificial surface. This is the initial game here on this uh, on this field. And as uh, Scott was mentioning earlier, there's a lot of things going on here up at Wycliffe High School. The construction has begun on the new K through 12 uh, education campus up here. And if uh, you know, unfortunately, to our left, you, we really can't see it from this vantage point, but a lot of work is already underway. And I understand after talking with Superintendent Joe Specia yesterday that uh, thus far the progress is a bit ahead of schedule and things are going extremely well. So it'll be, I believe, one more school year will be in the uh, building here at Wycliffe High School. And then a lot of, it'll be a new day, Scott yeah, one, Tennant. One more after this one, right? Yes, so one it's, more uh, after yeah, this. Yeah, the fall of 2023, we can expect that to open up. And a little bit of logistical chaos here in the meantime, but that will be more than worth it, Crank. I, I think we would all agree uh, as we come into the 2021-2022 uh, school year. And, boy, this time last year, Frank, we were here with masks, and, uh, you know, limited ticketing policies. And, boy, that's in some ways seems a million years ago. You, you know, I, I, if, if I recall the first game last year, your brother and I were crammed into the press box at over Lutheran West <laughs> with lightning and thunder, about a 90-minute delay before the game got started. And here we are tonight. We, it's almost like we would welcome that, at least, at least the rain, <laughs> to cool us off a little bit. Uh, before I get too much further, tonight we'd like to welcome – an addition to the Worldwide Blue Devil Network. One of the things we've been wanting to do is to expand some involvement on the network, and we want to welcome Shane, who's who's a junior at Wycliffe High School, and he's going to be assisting us here on, on the webcast tonight. So, Shane, welcome here with us tonight. And, uh, and Frank, we should mention Shane is a soccer star for the uh, Blue Devils of Wycliffe High School. He's a, he's a forward. Right, right, Shane? Play up at forward. You have all those goals. I figured you must be. And uh, I think one of the most dramatic of those coming last year in the district semis, right? An overtime goal, a header, I think, on, on a corner kick. And that, that takes a certain degree of athleticism. So we're looking for Shane and those Blue Devils to do well this year. Now I know where I've seen him before. He just recently was over in Japan playing. <laughs> he, was, he was playing some Olympic soccer. There you go. That's right. There and you so go. The Blue Devil boys open up, Frank, uh, their home part of their schedule this coming Tuesday uh, August the 31st, as they take on the Lutheran West Longhorns. That's a 7 p.m. varsity start, I believe, this Tuesday the 31st. That'll be their first game on this new turf at Memorial Stadium. And, you know, hopefully it, it's it's coming across on the Internet, but the field is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the colors, as you know, as laid out, they, they literally pop, you know, uh, the, with the Blue Devils and the, at, at the 50-yard line. It's, 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 it's truly phenomenal. Many years in the making. <laughs> Without yeah, question. I, mean, you know, I think we had a couple of false starts there over the last 10 or 15 years. Thought we were going to get it. And, uh, you know, and kudos to the administration I, of the Wycliffe schools. I, 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 I have to say, yes, I was just going to say kudos to Joe Specia, uh, Julie Ramos, and the rest of the administration and all those involved in making this happen because uh, a, a, you know, another great step forward for Wycliffe High School. Well, Frank, we're doing the starting lineups right now. We just heard about, uh, we talked earlier about Sean Durgans at that quarterback position. 
Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the line uh, across the line. We have at least one freshman starting across the line for the Blue Devils. And uh, I don't think we know yet whether the Blue Devils are going to receive the ball, but uh, one thing that we can count on seeing that we've seen in years past is, in fact, that pistol formation wing T offense. Uh, I think that uh, Coach Purcello and his staff, as we said, they've had to simplify the playbook somewhat. They'll open it up a bit more this week. You know, Coach Purcello was talking to both Mark and to me before the game and mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, the guys now have a okay. much better idea of where they're supposed to be and a much better idea of assignments than they had. And a lot of it had to do, you know, with injuries, guys stepping into slots they're not used to, guys joining the team late. You know, there are a lot of factors there. So I, I think we'll see nothing but improvement from this young Blue Devils squad as the year goes on, Frank. Scott, as I look at it, that is pretty much how, after watching last week's game, that's the view I'm taking uh, with regard to this team. Let's let's just look for improvement week to week, and you know you got to figure next year, the year after, this team probably will be out steamrolling people as the team was doing last year. Absolutely, and you know the, the schedule is a little different too. Um, you know, based on past records, seems a little bit easier than may, maybe it has been in the past, a, a skosh, right, a skosh. I mean, we're going to see teams coming in here like Fairport, which you know, we weren't sure a few weeks ago whether right. they were it, even going to field a team. team. Right. Yeah, right. But, uh, you know, the, the, the Skippers will, in fact, field a team and come on out here in week four as scheduled. Uh, next week, Wycliffe travels to Har Recreation Park uh, Harvey. in Painesville to take on the Harvey Red Raiders. That'll be a challenge. Absolutely. Be a, that's that's a, an ascending program versus what we've seen from some Harvey teams yep. in the past, Frank, for sure. So. Well, Scott, the uh, Devils are out on the field and uh, looks like they're going to be kicking off. So the Scarabs will have it first tonight. The Blue Devils are in their home all blue uniforms with the um, yellow slash golden helmets. The Scarabs are in their white uniforms with um, yellowish gold helmets as uh, Sean Durgantz, uh, the very talented quarterback, and also does the placements for the Blue Devils. He'll do uh, point afters, field goals, and he does the punting. So back deep, we've got uh, number two, and then um, Jason Abercrombie, and I think looks like number 10, Jordan Huff. So we've got it teed up. The home field advantage is uh, underway as it's fielded there to about the 22-yard line as uh, by Huff. He gets it out over the 30 to about the 35-yard line where Vincent Gargiulo was in there on the on that tackle. So um, the Scarabs will have it first and 10, their first possession here tonight. Thank you for being with us here on, if it's on YouTube or Facebook Live. And uh, Mark, just let me know that if you happen to be trying to connect in through the um, alumni website, you can just click on the link and you'll, you should be able to... Um, get the feed from either YouTube or Facebook Live. So it'll be first and 10 for the Scarabs as they break their huddle. Ball is set at the 37-yard line as the Scarabs are going from right to left on your computer screens. They set up in a shotgun formation and uh, eye back as uh, it's handed to number 10 Huff over um, what will be right tackle. Gets up to about the 40-yard line where Vincent Gargiulo, number 7, is in there on that tackle along with Shane Causey as um, Scott is uh, trying to avoid getting stung by a bee up here on the uh, uh, outside on the, you know, on a, it's actually a beautiful night. A little warm, but a beautiful night from the center of the universe, which is 44092. It'll bring up a second and seven for the Scarabs. Ball at the uh, at their own 40-yard line. They stay in that shotgun formation. The quarterback is uh, on a keeper, is going to keep it himself. He's uh, across the 45, the 50. We've got a couple of flags coming in. I'm going to guess it's going to be an offensive hold. He had enough for the first down, but we'll have to see what the call is going to be here on the field, and it is holding and it'll be against the Scarab. So that's going to back them up 10 yards from about the 39-yard line and uh, take away what was a nice positive run there for East Tech. So, Frank, the, uh, Excuse me, Frank, the, uh, the tackle there, although that play will be nullified, the tackle made by number 9, E.J. Mester. That's a name to pay attention to, Blue Devil fans. Not, a, not an overly big kid at 5'8", 140 pounds, but the sophomore is athletic and could be your quarterback of the future here in the next couple of years. Very good. 
So clock gets rolling. We're just underway. No score as uh, first possession for the Scarabs. They will now have it second and 17. The ball is back on their 30-yard line. They spread uh, one wide to the left, three wide to the right possible passing situation here in a pistol formation. Although the uh, quarterback's going to keep it himself, he's going to try to get wide to the left side, and he's contained beautifully there by number 21 for the Blue Devils, which is Jude Devaney. Jude Devaney. Devaney. We were going I, I knew over. I was going to. We, we were practicing that before the game, and I knew I was going to. Well, I messed you up, Frank, because I said Devaney, no, no, and then that, Shane corrected us. It is, in right. fact, Devaney. So. so Shane's going to go into school Monday morning and go, man, those that left-handed Old guy is uh, a Goomba. So no gain on the play there. It'll bring up third and long. Third and 17 for the Scarabs as they break their huddle. Got to give them a lot of credit, ladies and gentlemen. East Tech is here with a, a, a roster, a complete roster of about maybe 15 players. So a lot of kudos to the kids from East Tech High School. As uh, the quarterback on a little swing pass in the backfield. He completes it there to number two. He's going to get out over the 35-yard line out to about maybe the original line of scrimmage, which was the 37, number two being, well, number two. <laughs> as, as he was brought down by Chase Bonadio for the Blue Devils. So it's going to be a fourth and 10 for East Tech. I'm going to guess that they'll probably go into a punt Punting situation is going back deep for the Blue Devils is number six, Vince Gargiulo. And it looks like, is that Maurice Banks, number 58, setting up in the punt formation for East Tech. Clock running, nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. High snap, uh, gets a line drive punt off that takes an East Tech Roll down inside the Wycliffe 30, down to about the Wycliffe 27 and a half, 28 yard line, where the Blue Devils will take take over first and 10 for their first possession on their brand new football field here at Wycliffe Memorial Stadium. So Frank, we talked about uh, the the fact that Wycliffe has three 300 plus pounders on its roster, all three of them coming out to play along the offensive line on the Blue Devils' first possession, and that's Alex Cunningham, Mitchell Lindsay, and Noah Garrison. And if the rumor is true, we heard there may be a spot in the backfield for Thomas Wentz. So we'll see how the Devils line up. And as of yet, doesn't appear that he's in the backfield. Durgantz in the shotgun where he's got Gargiulo in the pistol right behind him. The snap. And uh, Durgantz uh, basically met in the backfield for a loss there all the way back to the 20 three-yard line, 24-yard line. So it'll be a loss of four. And that speed on the defensive side, we could see it there on that first play there with a good good attack there from East Tech. And that was uh, that really was uh, the nose guard. that just shot right through the gap, Frank. So it's going to bring up second and 15. It was a loss of five. So it's back on the 23-yard line. This time the Devils break the huddle, and they've got two backs in the backfield. And this time it looks like I think it's Gargiulo and Wentz. Yeah, Gargiulo and Wentz in the backfield there. Um, a little flip there to Gargiulo, trying to get wide to the left side. He's across the 25. He's out to the 30, maybe the 32-yard line. Very nice gain there. Where it'll set up a much more manageable third down as uh, Gargiulo was able to get wide on the left side out to about the 32-yard line. And he'll need to get to about the 38-yard line. So it'll bring up a manageable third and six for the Blue Devils. As Jashawn Abercrombie, Abercrombie was in there to make that tackle. Thanks, Mark. Again in the pistol formation, we got movement. We got a bunch of, and, and I have a feeling that the Scarabs wanting to blitz the Devils came flying across, and they did. So it'll be a encroachment on East Tech. It's going to move it up to about the 30 eight-yard line, make it extremely manageable. A third and one now for Wycliffe as East Tech is stacking the line of scrimmage. So looking for them to basically just come busting up and uh, on a quick handoff, I think that went to Wentz. It did. Yep. As he got the first down over the 40 to about the 43-yard line as he went out over right guard. 
And Frank, you know, we talked about this. Thomas, the only returning starter from last year, he's handling the pressure well. The weight of the world's on that kid. No for this question. Team. And that was, you know, he hit that hole there, Scott. He had the hole, hit it, and he did he did what he needed to do. And that's that's what we're looking to see. And Thomas is still in the backfield. He's set up on the wing side of the wing tee. The snap back, the handoff to Gargiulo trying to sweep it wide to the right side. Nice, cut. nice, nice cut as he gets up the field over the 45 to about the 48-yard line. It'll be a gain of about uh, five yards on the play. And, Frank, it's interesting. You know, that the, Vince showed some experience there cutting that up. Young backs yep. always think that they can outrun the defense that's that right. way. And that's how you lose yardage. That's right. <laughs> and on this one, second and five. Now this time they line up Thomas. Wentz up in the pistol right behind Durgantz. Devils send one wide to the left side. They give it to Wentz, who's met right at the line of scrimmage. No, he kept fighting, but uh, he's going to go down at about the 35-yard line. I'm sorry, the 45-yard line. It'll be a loss of a few on that play, as uh, the, the Scarabs were not fooled. And they had good, good containment and pursuit there uh, on that second down play. E.J. Mester making his way in to the ball game as uh, on his way out is Kevin McCabe, the senior. So we'll see what the Devils are capable of doing on a third and eight with 5.50 to go in the first quarter. No score, first possession for Wycliffe on a rather humid but beautiful day here in Wycliffe, Ohio. Snap, Dragant's looking to throw. He's got pressure. He fires, complete to Gargiulo. He's got the first down and run out of bounds, and he's take in East Tech territory as uh, looks like he's going to be run out of bounds at about the East Tech 43-yard line. So nice conversion there, Scott, on that third and long. Good job by Sean Durgans. He had some pressure in his face, got up there, found Gargiulo, got it into his hands. That well done. So Devils quickly up to the line. They, they, they run a modified version of a no huddle. They send one wide to the right, who happens to be... Um, Jude Devaney, Devaney, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it before the season's over, Scott. As uh, Devils in that pistol, as uh, well, uh, a broken Dur play. A broken play, <laughs> but uh, Durgance was able to go over right guard and get some positive yardage down to about the 41-yard um, line of East Tech. So it'll be a gain of two. And Scott, I'm not sure on that one if it was a matter of. Uh, miscommunication as to who was supposed to take the ball or where he was supposed to hand the ball off. Yeah, definitely threw the timing off, no doubt. About a second, he managed to turn it into positive yardage. Yes, which was smart. So they'll make it second down, eight to go for the Devils. They're at the East Tech 41. They operate out of a no huddle. The Devils send one wide to the left, one wide to the right. And now we've got uh, timeout being taken on the field. With um, 4.46 to go, timeout being taken by Wycliffe with no score here in the first quarter from Wycliffe Memorial Stadium. Frank, you know, you mentioned you made a note that uh, of Kevin McCabe, the senior coming off the field, and that reminds me, you know, when you look at this Blue Devil roster, there are only about four seniors I know. on this roster, and, and uh, Wycliffe fans may remember this about four or five years ago. There was no middle school football team for an entire season because the right. numbers were, in fact, so low. Right. And that's why we're seeing so few underclassmen now. That's kind of coming back. Uh, I don't want to say to haunt us. You know, this is some good, talented young players. But it's tough when you don't have some of those upperclassmen out there who, uh, you know, tend to have been in these types of situations in other sports and can sort of help the young kids calm down. So a lot of these guys are learning under fire <laughs> and on the job, ba undoubtedly. Baptism by fire. Maybe the best way. And, you know, in years past... We've seen variations of that here with the Blue Devils, and I'm, year, you know, like game in and game out. This team always brings their game, no matter what the score is. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. they never give up. They Last week, they, they just don't quit. And that in and of itself, Blue Devil fans, is a victory. So we're about ready to get back to action here. It'll be second down, eight to go, ball on the 41. Starting to cool off just a little bit up here as the sun is beginning to set there to the west. Durgantz in the shotgun, calling for the snap, and uh, he's got an unwelcome visitor there from um, East Tech as coming across there was number 58, Maurice Banks. 
as uh, as Mark found out, the uh, the Scarabs like to blitz, and I think they were trying to they were prepared to do that on that play, and Durgans was able to get him to jump, so that now sets it up a much more manageable second down and three to go. Ball now at the 36 yard line of East Tech. Wentz now in that pistol right behind Durgans. As uh, on a delay, they give it to Gargiulo. He's up the middle as uh, he's near first down yard, first down yardage. I think the heat is affecting the jaw, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. <laughs> you know, Frank, that's that little inside counter. We used to see Isaiah Bolin, for example, that's run right. that. And, you know, you've got some uh, about two, three fakes going before the ball's handed off. And that's a hard one to defend at this level. Well, he was able to make just enough for the first down, so it'll be first and 10. Wycliffe, ball at the East Tech 32-yard line. Four and a half minutes to go. No score here in the first quarter as East Tech basically had it, um, in essence, a three and out, and this is the first possession for the Devils as Thomas Wentz takes it, and it's kind of like a bull rush over right tackle. He gets inside the 30 down to about the East Tech, I'm going to call it the East Tech 27-yard line. It'll be a nice gain there of about five and a half, almost six yards so Frank, on that we play. We should mention, Frank, Thomas Wenz, you know, 6'2", 210 pounds, not a small guy. Actually listed on the roster as an offensive lineman and right. linebacker, but toting the rock tonight for Wycliffe. And, and doing a nice job in his first few touches as uh, clock running, and the Devils are on the move for the, the first time this evening. Wentz now to the right side of Durgantz. They operate on a shotgun formation. Snap is back, uh, Wentz to the left side. He's inside the 20, down to about the 15, knocked off his feet down near the 10 yard line. Nice, nice, nice read there by Wentz as it'll be first down for Wycliffe at about just inside the East Tech 11 yard line. Well done there by the Scarabs defensive back taking his, uh, he was not gonna take uh, Thomas on straight ahead. He just took his legs out there. And Thomas was able to, you know, kind of almost do a handstand and, you know, get a few more yards after the initial hit. So first and 10 ball at the 11. The Devils can get another first down. It would be near the one-yard line. As uh, Gargiulo, who goes over right tackle on the handoff, is down to about the five-yard line. Nice, nice movement there by the Devils. And, you know, in the early going here, Scott, the offensive line is doing a very nice job and opening up some holes. Boy, and firing off the ball much faster than we saw last week. Exactly. And, and moving laterally well compared yes. to what we saw last yes. week, too. Good the, sign. The, it seems like um, better decision-making as compared to indecision. And now we've got a, a – they're stopping the clock for something. We'll wait – or I think for um, an official timeout having to do with um, – Thomas Wentz has Thomas an equipment Wentz, issue. Uh, yeah. Having – um, an equipment issue, so he'll come out for probably about a play, and now coming into the game for the Devils is a freshman, number 28, Wyatt Bamer. We're going to go with Wyatt Bamer. We'll go with freshman. Wyatt Bamer, and he's going to spread wide, extremely wide to the left side. Second and four for Wycliffe, clock running, two third, about two and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. Bamer's up on Meadowbrook Drive, Frank. He's so far and out. Snap uh, to Durgans, who Bobbles it in the backfield, and uh, East Tech was not fooled as they were able to uh, corral him back at about the, oh, just just shy of the nine-yard line. So there'll be a little bit of a loss on that play. As uh, number one, Quay, is that Glover was in there to make that stop. And now we have a timeout taken on the field by East Tech with 2.11 to go here in the first quarter. No score uh, from Wickland Memorial Field on the home opener of the 2021 high school football season for your Wickland Blue Devils. So, Frank, this is interesting because, you know, the Blue Devils don't necessarily have an experienced place kicker. If they do not manage to get to the one and get a first down, you have to assume they're going to go for it on fourth and anything. Right <laughs> at this point, I, so I would, I would, at I would this go point, I, yeah, I think they're calling both. You know, they'll mm -hmm. let the guys know what both plays are. You know, here's our third down play. If we don't get the first, get up to the line, run this play, and then you know we'll kind of go from there. But as you said, you know, first down is possible. And at this point, you know, when you had a you had a rough opening game last week where you lost by multiple touchdowns, and you're playing the first football game. 
on this beautiful new turf on your home field, you are more want to go for it than not, I, I think, at any point in this game. I, I think you're right. So we'll see what the Devils um, dial up here on a third and eight ball at the East Tech nine. They can get a first down at about the one yard line. Nice crowd on hand. Great to see all the fans back here as last year basically was only the, the parents of the players, cheerleaders, and uh, members of the band. Durgantz in the shotgun. East Tech showing blitz. Got movement. Well, we had movement. <laughs> uh, that's going to be on Wycliffe. That's going to be on Wycliffe. Although, although you got to wonder. Did he get did drawn? The, yeah, did he get drawn? And, and there was movement by number 70 of East Tech. So that, I mean, it could have gone the other way, but they're going to call it against Wycliffe, so that's going to stack them up. Uh, third and 13, that's going to move it back to about the East Tech 14-yard line. So, Scott, definitely this is two-down territory. Thomas Wentz is in the eye right behind Durgantz. The snap is bobbled. Wentz picks it up. He's going to get met. Still on his feet, breaking tackles. He gets ahead to about the... 12-yard line, and something that last week was a bit of a challenge was that snap going back from the center to the quarterback, and we've seen that a couple times yeah. here tonight. We've had the Luzo brothers playing center over the last several years, and uh, you know we, we did get kind of get spoiled by that, and you forget how difficult it is to accurately snap that ball and then get hit in the mouth every play. You got right? it. So. You got it. So this will present an interesting call for Wycliffe as it'll be fourth and eleven. Ball at the East Tech 12-yard line. Just under a minute and a half to go here in the first quarter. No score. The Devils send one wide to the left side. Gargiulo's in a slot to the left side. I wonder if you go, uh, you try to go for E.J. Mester on the wide side of the field. So Durgantz looking, nope. a little throwback to Gargiulo, who in and out of his hands incomplete as number two for East Tech was there to break it up, They're trying a little bit of a misdirection play. So with that incompletion, that's going to turn the ball over to East Tech where they will have their second possession, and they'll start first and 10 on their own 12-yard line. So, Frank, earlier, you know, we mentioned uh, that our assistant tonight, Shane, plays uh, a, a critical role on that Wycliffe boys soccer team. We're also joined by Wycliffe boys soccer star number seven, Colin Casey, wow. in the booth with us. Yeah, this is like royalty. Wycliffe royalty we have We're up honored. here as well. So, Scott, and we haven't even mentioned Mrs. Metzger. That's right. <laughs> who is up with the principal She's up here with us. Metzger. So I have to say, Scott, I mean, for all this royalty we have here, I don't see the blimp. I'm working I'm on it. I'm looking for the blimp, I'm buddy. I'm working on I'm it. I'm looking buddy. for the blimp. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, it's, and the blimp has the correct colors. You know, I mean, you know the Goodyear blimp was painted based on the colors of Wycliffe High School. There's no doubt about that. Hey, Frank, real quick, now that we have Colin here, we're going to talk a little bit later about some of the other Wycliffe Falls sports teams. The golf team, interestingly, is uh, Colin's a member of that golf team. That is uh, a, not all, but a bunch of Wycliffe student athletes who actually play other sports, mostly soccer. I think there's one volleyball player on there, right? Lily plays volleyball as well. So, uh, you know, those kids are getting out there. They're, uh, you know, they're playing nine holes, and then they're going to soccer practice or, you know, or vice versa. And, you know, we've seen it uh, also done on the soccer and cross country end. Well, uh, Junior Brady Pugh does that. Well, so. but we also saw them in Tokyo. We, we did, in fact, see the Blue Devils play. That's right. Representing the U.S. That's in Tokyo. Right. That is absolutely true. So I think we had a timeout on the field. Yes, we have a timeout taken on the field by East Tech. So it'll be when we're back to action, it'll be first and ten for the Scarabs. The ball is deep in their own territory on the 12-yard line with about a minute and seven seconds to go here in the first quarter. No score from Wycliffe Memorial Stadium. So, Frank, on East Tech's first possession, we saw Johan Gaines uh, on the keeper a few times have some success. Uh, you have to assume you're going to see Gaines keep it a couple more times as he lines up in the shotgun formation with Huff behind him. Yeah, he's got a, they also set up in like a pistol formation with a back behind the quarterback who pitches it. It's uh, bobbled on the ground. It's in the end zone, and it's still bobbling, and the ball is gone, was picked up by Wycliffe in the end zone by Durgantz. 
basically, no, it's a, a Wycliffe touchdown. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Thomas Wenz is signaling safety. No, it's a touchdown. Yeah, but you have the head official signaling touchdown, which was interesting because, uh, you know, they, uh, we didn't have a lot of time to gain possession of there, but we'll take the six over the two any day, Frank. No. Okay, there was a flag on the play, which was um, illegal procedure against East Tech. It's been declined by Wycliffe, so the Devils are... The Devils are on the board, ladies and gentlemen, and um, lead this one early on by a score of six to nothing. So Sean Durgant's on to With attempt the point after out of the hold of E.J. Mester. And here's another thing we took for granted last year with Isaiah Bolin booting the place oh, kicks. You right, know, I mean, uh, right. you know, if not quite automatic, he was darn close to it, the left-footed kicker. The snap is back. The kick is up, and it is wide to the left. So with 56 seconds to go here in the first quarter, the Blue Devils have their first lead of the season by a score of 6 to nothing. and here's your fight song. So with all the craziness that happened on that play, basically what happened was just as Wycliffe's had a few uh, challenges on the snap from the center to the quarterback, we had the same thing happen. Bob, you know, uh, kind of went off the hands of the quarterback, um, Johan Gaines, and rolled into the backfield where I think Abercrombie was trying to pick it up. He wasn't able to pick it up, and eventually Durgantz was able to fall on it near the back of the end zone which basically become, became the touchdown for the Blue Devils. Well, if you remember that uh, Brown Steelers wild card playoff game the, uh, last year, that first snap, the one over the That's head right. of Ben Roethlisberger, as we see, that ball becomes awfully slippery when it's sitting there by itself well, and, in the and end also, zone. But also think on this, with a humid night like this tonight, yeah. the ball is going to be slippery. So Durgantz has it teed up at the 40-yard line. The Scarabs have three back at about their 20. Probably the pooch kick right. A variation as it comes down, picked up by Huff at the 21, or Abercrombie, goes wide to the right side. He's got a couple blockers in front of him. He's out over the 30, 35, almost. Looks like he's going to be brought down at about at about the 40-yard line, where nice return there by Jashawn Abercrombie as he was brought down there by Patrick Quinn for the Blue Devils. So it'll be good. Good field possession to begin what will be their third possession for East Tech. With 40, 46 seconds to go in the first quarter, the Devils ahead by a score of 6 to nothing. And um, a little bit later here, we'll introduce you to a few more of our um, Wycliffe students who are joining us here for the first time on the Worldwide Blue Devil Network. We're extremely happy to have them with us, and we'll be able to tell you a bit more about them here during the webcast. So the this time the Scarabs are sending three wide to the left side, one wide to the right. Quarterbacks in the I formation, high snap again. This time they give it to uh, Huff, who's trying to get wide to the left. He's nice pursuit and brought down for about a loss of one on the play as they were able to get it to number 10, Jordan Huff. Excellent uh, pursuit there and open field tackle by Sean Durgantz. And it's going to be a lo actually a loss of about two on that play. Take it back to about the 38-yard line. So clock running down to about 17 seconds to go here in the first quarter. We'll see if there's probably a good chance that East Tech will, won't even get a playoff before the quarter ends. And it looks like the uh, Scarabs are going to be willing to just allow the clock to run out here. And with uh, one full quarter... Uh, in the books here at Wycliffe High School, the score, the Wycliffe Blue Devils six and the East Tech Scarabs nothing. Well, Frank, that was an encouraging first quarter in a lot of yes, ways. Yes. Uh, loved, uh, you know, here on the defensive side of the ball, 
nice to see the defensive line stringing out these plays, these end arounds that the Scarabs have been trying. So, you know, much like their offensive line brethren, they're moving laterally well, showing some quickness, showing some aggression. Uh, there in that last play, Turgan's coming up from his defensive back position. And uh, we've seen that uh, throughout the years at Wycliffe with quarterbacks, our athletic quarterbacks playing both ways, sometimes a safety position, sometimes a quarterback position. Sometimes they move around back there, but that is a, a fairly common sight at Wycliffe these days to see your quarterback coming up to make tackles. We used to see it for number three, Mason Ballad. Tonight we're seeing it for number one, Sean Durgans as well. Looking across that Blue Devil defense, some of the names that are toiling there in the line that we haven't mentioned a lot of. We did mention Jude uh, Devaney. He plays some defense, as does Thomas Wenz uh, out there. Number 10, Chase Bonadio uh, out here at a cornerback spot. And uh, earlier we did see Gavin Zerbedi, uh not only on special teams, but getting some defensive time as well. So lots of new names and numbers to memorize wearing the uh, blue double blue and gold tonight, Frank. And Scott, since we're in the second quarter, I tell you what, take it on the microphone there, my friend. Yeah, absolutely appreciate it, Frank. So as we start quarter number two, East Tech will have its second and 12 at its own 38-yard line. And the Scarabs looking over to their sideline to get the play call from head coach Daryl Forrest. As quarterback Johan Gaines is once again in that shotgun formation. And once again, the Scarabs line stands up. As I think they're trying to just get themselves sorted a little bit. You know, one thing, Scott, you can see they have a lot of athleticism on that team. I mean, on their team, w without question. Yeah, absolutely. Small roster, but there's some kids that can play for sure. No so. question about it. So here we go at the start of quarter number two. There's a man in motion from left to right. Gaines barks out the signals. He takes the high snap, drops it, picks it back up. He's going to try to find some running room around the left side, and he is brought down there for what it looks to be, at best, a no gain and possibly a loss of one. As making the tackle right there for the Blue Devils was Gavin Zerbedi, number 45, whose name we just mentioned. That actually did turn out to be a loss of two on the play. So that's going to bring up another third and long situation for East Tech. The Scarabs facing third and 14 from their own 36-yard line. And, Scott, there's another example where just it's those little things that matter. You know, being able to get the snap back, be able to, you know, get the ball to the guy that needs to, you know, on the handoff or the, or, or the outside pitch. And, you know, w when it doesn't happen, bad things can happen really quick. Absolutely. They've yet to throw the ball. Whoa. So we have some movement, and we have an illegal procedure that's about to be called against East Tech, so that's going to back them up even more. They're going to face a third and 19 now. And what was uh, already a passing situation is now an ultra-passing situation, I would say, Frank. So are you saying, hey, 19? I am in I am, in fact, saying hey, 19. Well, speaking it of was which, coming. I, I'd like to give a shout-out uh, to my friend Gary Katz, who, uh, speaking of hey, 19, was the well-known producer of uh, Steely Dan, and he's a huge sports fan, and we've kind of corralled him into being a fan of the Wickla Blue Devils. All right, third and 19 for East Tech from the Scarabs' 31-yard line. East Tech trailing Wickla 6-0 here early in the second quarter. Gaines gets the snap. He throws across the middle. Incomplete intended there for number 19, Jay Sean Abercrombie. On the coverage for Wycliffe was Gavin Zerbati, the sophomore linebacker, who is uh, making his presence felt out there in the field. And that's going to bring up a fourth down and long. And presumably another punting situation for East Tech as number 58, Maurice Banks, stands back at about his own 19-yard line. And Vince Gargiulo is for Wycliffe standing back in Blue Devil territory at about his own 37. It was interesting last week, Frank. Uh, Gargiulo at halftime came over to, uh, off the sidelines, came over to the fence, and he was talking to Zach Estevez, who was, who was visiting. And Zach asked him how it was going, and Gargiulo said, it's rough out there, man. <laughs> it was baptism by fire. Yes, it was. There's we a, have a flag. Uh, and there's the snap on a high punt that hits at about the 49 rolls into Wycliffe territory, and it's going to be downed at about the Wycliffe 47, but let's wait and see what the flag was there. And I believe it's going to be an illegal procedure against East Tech, and if I'm Wycliffe, I think I'd decline that and just take the nice field position. That. Well, 
And that is in exactly, in fact, what Wycliffe will do. Uh, so the Blue Devils, who already hold a 6-0 lead, are set up fairly pretty as they'll begin first and 10. We'll see where they put it down, but it's going to be right near midfield. And I think tonight we've seen, we were introduced to a new weapon on offense. Number 5-0. Thomas Wenz. Hard runner. He could spell Gargiulo a little bit. Vince doesn't have to get popped every play because that'll take its toll over the course of a long season, and we're only here in week two. So first and 10, Wycliffe, as the Blue Devils will set up shop from their own 47-yard line. 10-24 to go. Your score, Wycliffe 6, East Tech nothing. And the Blue Devils looking to add to that touchdown lead. Quarterback Sean Durgans is going to hand off to Gargiulo around the left side. He's going to roll forward right to about the midfield stripe. I'm going to call that a pickup of three on the play. That'll bring up second down and seven for Wycliffe. And they will indeed put the ball right on the 50-yard line. The tackle there was made by number 50, the inside linebacker for the Scarabs. And that ball resting just outside of the beautiful new Wycliffe Blue Devils logo here on the new turf at Memorial Stadium. Durgans is going to hand off to Gargiulo around the right side. He's able to get across the line of scrimmage into East Tech territory. Pick up of about two yards on the play. We're going to call it third and five from the East Tech 40. Uh, correction, I said 47. It's going to be about the 48, but nevertheless, a two-yard pickup. And Wycliffe's going to come right back up to the line facing a third and five. They're going to have E.J. Mester split here to the near side. Thomas Wenz is in the backfield with Durgans in that pistol formation. East Tech showing blitz. And there's a handoff inside, the little wingback counter. That's Gargiulo. He's going to get enough for the first down as he takes it across the 40-yard line. And yep. I'll tell you, Mars, uh, Coach Mars Purcell and the staff saving that little wingback counter for just the right times tonight. It's, it's come in handy three times. It, it, what made it work was... There was hot pursuit on the blitz from East Tech, and basically East Tech ran past the ball carrier, Gargiulo, who read it perfectly and was able to go right up the middle for the first down. So that was an eight-yard pickup for Vince on that particular play. First and 10, Wycliffe at the East Tech 40-yard line. Durgans takes it. He's going to keep it himself. He gets up across the 35-yard line to about the Scarabs 34. And, you know, we saw that play quite a bit last week, the quarterback keeper. Haven't seen it quite as much tonight. And we got somebody down for East Tech. Looks like number 72. So that, that'll stop the clock with 8.32 to go here in the first half. So, Frank, of course, uh, we mentioned it before, but coming up at halftime, the Wycliffe Swing Band will perform. Now, normally, we would have the visiting band perform first here at Memorial Stadium and then the Swing Band, but East Tech uh, did not bring a band, so... The swing band will be the first and only band up. They will be performing. We'll give a special sneak preview just to our worldwide Blue Devil Network listeners as to what, uh, as to what the swing band will be playing tonight. Uh, and they will be playing Dance Monkey, which is by Australian singer Tones and I, if you're not up on the latest tunes. Um, Kings and Queens, and a song that you might know by the Isley Brothers called Shout. Oh, yeah. And that particular song that... Uh, I know you want to make me want to... Shout. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. I, I missed my cue. You know, cue. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the key to comedy is timing. <laughs> and a good straight man. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, shout today, that is, uh, they've been featuring various trumpet players on that song. Uh, the first two times they performed it, a one Mr. Jack Tennant was, was uh, featured as the soloist tonight. It's scheduled to be senior Everett Chapo, who's a third-generation swing band member. Wow, very cool. Looking forward to that. As Always, you know, we get so many people that are always jazzed to connect in by way of the Worldwide Blue Devil Network to catch the performance of the swing band as well as um, we normally get a lot of people that are checking in to see the band performance from the visitors. And, you know, it, uh, too bad that we don't have somebody here because I'm, I'm sure East Tech would bring a wonderful band uh, to perform here tonight. So we're going to get back to the action here. It's second down and four for Wick of ball resting at the East Tech 34-yard line. Blue Devils leading 6-0, and they are driving. 
Durgans takes the snap. There's a handoff to Garjula. He goes off tackle right. And not much room there at all. I think he got back to just about the line of scrimmage, maybe a half yard past. That was a good read there by number 55, the linebacker for East Tech. He was not fooled by the fake that Durgans um, gave to the wing back, and he was able to pursue and, and um, hold the gain to basically not much gain at all. Once again, Garjulo, a wing on the left side. And we have a East Tech player coming across. No, they're going to call Wycliffe for illegal procedure. Yeah. And so. Although, the, you know, once again, though, you had the defensive player break the line of scrimmage, you know, and um, so. Well, that's part of the discipline of playing along that line. That's right. So that's going to make it a little bit tougher. Third and nine situation. Ball goes back to the 39-yard line. Durgans looks over to the sideline to get the play call from Coach Purcello. He's got Thomas Wenz in the pistol with him. Vince Garjula wing back on the left side. He's going to roll to his left. Durgans throws, and it's caught by Mester across the 20-yard line, and he is corralled down at about the 18, maybe the 17-yard line. You know, Scott, that's a tough throw because he's running to his left, and he's having to throw back to his right. And um, he was able to find his receiver in the flat, and but he had to get it over the linebacker. So that was a nice throw there by the quarterback, uh, Durgans. And that is a pickup of 21 yards and a first down Wycliffe. They're going to spot the ball at the East Tech 18-yard line. 7.23 and counting left here in the first half. And your Blue Devils driving. Durgans will take the snap. He'll hand off to Wenz, and he's going to make his way just across the 15-yard line. You know, if if I wasn't so sure, that number that number almost looks like three seven one two. Eastwind, the locomotive that you know is the official live steam locomotive of the Wickler Blue Devils. Man, well he runs like Eastwind. He sure he? does, he, boy. He runs downhill, as the phrase goes. So officially a pickup of four, second and six. Something tells me that play, they probably call it like the East Wind Special or something to that <laughs> I'm effect. I'm sure they do. Durgans is going to give to Wenz again, and he's going to find room across the 10-yard line. He's still on his feet. <laughs> Boy, he bulls his way down to the nine. And Thomas Wenz is not an easy out when he gets that ball. I think he was probably watching some highlight reels of Tay Phillips <laughs> when he played here. So that's going to bring up a third and one. The Heck ball at the East Tech nine. Once again, we're probably in two down territory here, Scott. And yeah, I think there uh, was some movement on the Wycliffe side of the yep. ball. I believe that Wenz may have gone just a little early. And a legal procedure is indeed the call. That's a, that's a rough penalty to incur uh, when you got the momentum. Yep. And you're inside the 10-yard line. So let's see what this uh, relatively young Wycliffe offense can do, how they respond to that. Well, the last time they had third and four and got an illegal procedure was third and nine, and they were able to complete the long pass. And we have an official's timeout. And I think we're going to get right back to the action here. So once again, it's Wens in the backfield with quarterback Durgans. We have E.J. Mester split to the left, Garjulo in a slot to the right. East Tech showing blitz. And Durgans rolls out to his right. He's looking, looking, he's gonna keep it. Gets across the 10, down across the five, still on his feet, bullying a Wow! And touchdown, Wycliffe Blue Devils. What a run by the quarterback. Junior number one, Sean Durgans on the 14 yard touchdown drive. And Frank, he would not be denied. You know, he, he got hit three or four times inside the five yard line and you're right he not only was he not denied but he stayed on his feet and he kept moving forward uh and that's a step forward from based on from what we saw last week so i have to say in this first in this first half from what i'm seeing of the devils tonight as compared to last week i'm very pleased absolutely so let's see if they i think we're going to go for two here frank the blue devils having missed on the extra point attempt of uh, their first touchdown Durgans, uh, well, we did have movement across, and I think this one might be on the defense. And in fact, it is. Yep. So that's going to give them a yard, put them a yard closer for the two point conversion attempt. So, a couple times there, Scott, third and long, and the Devils were able to convert. 
great sign. That, yes, that's a very good sign because that shows not only the ability, but you know, but their growth uh, on the maturity side as well. Yeah, absolutely. You don't you don't lock up. The moment doesn't get too big. That's right. And that's you. a combination of coaching and the guys taking direction from their coaches. Snap, a direct snap goes to uh, Wenz, and boy, he just bowled his way into the end zone, and he gets the two-point conversion. And that, and that was a, that a problem again on the snap. And yeah, it ended up being, uh, Wenz picked it up, and it looked like he was caught, and boy, I don't know that Thomas Wenz is going to want to play defense anymore. I uh, think he sees himself as a running back. I think here's your, here's your fight song. Well, Frank, it, uh, as we heard the fights on there for the second time tonight, that was a lot of fun. Great to see the Blue Devil cheerleaders out in full force here on the track, led by their two captains, senior Emma Thompson and junior Jada Davis. Uh, Emma also plays in the Wycliffe Swing Band. She will be performing with the band at halftime, and she's also number 19. She wears on the Lady Devils soccer team, uh, while Jada is, in addition to being a member of the Leadership Lake County program, she is a Blue Devil volleyball player and plays the libero position for the JV team and also plays up with the varsity team. So it's what you get at a smaller school nowadays. Frank, uh, everyone plays, wears multiple hats. Always good to see. And uh, Scott, I can see down on the sideline, the Devils are working on that snap where um, Alex Cunningham is working on being able to get that snap back to the quarterback in a much more consistent manner because they've had a few challenges tonight in that exchange between the center and the quarterback. So Sean Durgantz. Uh, speaking of wearing many hats, as a man who wears a lot of hats for Wycliffe, he will line up to kick off ball on the 40-yard line. East Tech once again with three players across deep at about their own 17-yard line. Of course, uh, Durgans has been pooching it and modified pooching it, and he's going to do that again. It's going to come down, called for a fair catch at the 30, and caught there. And that is, uh, you know, as long as you have someone with good hands, that's the best defense against the pooch. That's right. And, you know, over, year, over the years, Frank, we've seen the Blue Devils recover more than one of those pooches that kind of fall in that dead zone. So it's going to be first and 10 for East Tech. Scarabs on the short end of a 14 to nothing score. Five minutes, 46 seconds to go here before halftime. And East Tech looking to see if it can build a little bit of momentum. And as you said, Frank, that is a uh, small but mighty East Tech roster. You know, a lot of times we talk about how small the Wycliffe sideline is. There are even fewer players for the Scarabs on that far sideline. I, I've noticed that, and but, but I have to tip my hat to the Scarabs because for the players that are here, they're giving it their all tonight, as, and both teams are. I mean, they're, they're, they're leaving nothing to chance on a hot, humid night. Hopefully both teams are staying hydrated. I mean, these are the... These are the games where, you know, you, you can pull a muscle, what have you. Um, the cramps, cramps, yeah, for sure. You want, you want to make sure you get that uh, Gatorade or vitamin water going so that uh, you stay hydrated and um, perform as best as possible on this uh, humid evening. So it's going to be first and 10 East Tech from its own 30, as we said. The Blue Devil defense out there again. E.J. Mester back in a safety position. Chase Bonadio playing the near side corner and Jude Devaney playing the far side. Wens in kind of a middle linebacker position right now. There's a high snap pulled down by Gaines. He's going to try to keep it, cuts it back up inside and will not escape the clutches of the Blue Devil defender there. And that's going to be a loss on that particular play. I Oh, Sounds like Shane Causey, yeah, number 59, right. was the one who was able to finally to bring him down. And I'll tell you, Gaines is he's shifty, Frank. He's, you he's, could he's see quick. that. You, you could see that. He almost, if Causey didn't get him, he probably was off for uh, positive yards. But uh, Causey had, you know, good pursuit um, in the open and was able to bring him down for the loss. And good discipline, you know, staying in your lane there and, and keeping contained. 
So there's a loss of four there, second and 14. Ball back at the East Tech 26 yard line. Gains in the shotgun, takes the snap. He's gonna hand it off there to his running back who's still on his feet, gets across the 30 yard line and is finally brought down. That's number 10, Jordan Huff. And we got a flag on the play. And an injured scarab as well. And let's, let's wait and see. Let's sort this out. As the side judge and our referee confer. And the preliminary signal is going to get, go against East Tech. So the penalty against East Tech is going to uh, at least partially nullify what was a very nice run by number 10, Jordan Huff. Well, we have a moment here. I want to give a shout out to uh, Chicago, Illinois, Mitchell Lane, who's um, one of my uh, brothers from another mother of the live steam mafia. Um, Mitch, um, all of us up here in the booth, we will be welcoming that deep dish pizza that you will be bringing back for all of us from Chicago. What's Mark, that? Mark, what are you? Your your sausage? Yeah, Shane, what do you? And your pizza? What do you want, buddy? Beck, wait a well, while. The bacon is not an Italian thing. That's a flatbread. How about you? Pancetta, okay, pancetta. We'll put pancetta in there for you. Scott, what are you going for? Well, you know, because because Mark and I are of hillbilly heritage, I'm going for some squirrel on my pizza. That's what they do back home in West Virginia. Oh, my God. Well, Mitch, <laughs> Mitch, I hope you're writing all that down, buddy. And he's probably going to come back and put some live steam soot in the dough, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have it for you on the next webcast. So, um, so hey, gang, good to have you with us. And also my dear friend Steve Tomko, who's a big Blue Devil fan who lives out in Olmstead Township. Um, and he, um, his son is uh, very involved with the Olmstead Falls Bulldogs and want to welcome them in as they're here with us on the Blue Devil, Worldwide Blue Devil Network here tonight as uh, the Blue Devils are out to a 14 to nothing lead as we got about 440 to go yet here in the first half. And so a timeout. We had a timeout. That was a, I believe that was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that won against East Tech, and that's why the ball now is way back at the 16-yard line and they about got, third and they third in a mile. They got to get to the 40 to get a first down. So third and 24. So, Wycliffe, here's where you don't want to make a mistake on a pass play, like pass interference or something. And Now we've got a timeout being taken. By Wycliffe. By Wycliffe. Right, and I think you know they may want to tell their guys that exact thing, Frank. Right. It's like, look, give up, you know, give up the ten yarder in front of you. That's right. okay. Just wrap up, make the tackle. Do not commit, you know, a defensive hold or a pass interference there. And and, and this here's where the coaches are now coaching slash teaching, you know, when you have a young team like this, because it's easy to get wrapped up into it, let the emotions get going, and you don't want to have something happen that goes the wrong way when you've got them backed up to the, on the 16 and they've got to go, you know, 24 yards to get the first down. And I'll tell you what, Frank, actually, you know, I said, uh, you know, they're probably saying, you know, do not commit that pass interference or anything, but this is where the teaching gets more complex. They have to tell the guys, look, read the play. If a guy's going to go for a touchdown, unless you, unless you hold him, you do what you got to do. That's right. right? Oh, yeah. so, so it's nuanced. You have to read the play. You have to know the situation. And then with every play, these kids get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more football savvy. You know, and we don't want to make it sound like there's not a Blue Devils ever played football. There are guys back from last year's roster. There are guys that played through the Wycliffe Midget Football League. It's just compared to most years, yep. there are more new and inexperienced players than I think we're used to seeing. Certainly, the more than previous, you know, recent years. And thus far tonight, what we've seen, they took direction from the coaching staff extremely well this week, as they had to get ready to play this athletic team from East Tech. All right, so. We're going to get back to action here shortly as East Tech faces that third down and 24 situation from its own 16-yard line. Johan gains the quarterback once again in that shotgun. And about two yards behind him is the running back number 10, Jordan Huff. And Gaines takes the snap. He's going to look to his right. And it's it's intercepted, up. and Gargiulo's going to go into the end zone. Wow. A pick six for Vince Gargiulo. And I'll tell you what, Frank. All credit to Vince Gargiulo there, but boy, you knew from the moment that ball was snapped where Gaines was going. He certainly didn't try to look anybody right, off. Right. There was, and Gargiulo know. read it perfectly, 
uh, and picked it off and uh, basically, what, about a 15-yard return for the Blue Devil touchdown. So that's going to extend the Blue Devil lead to 20 to nothing. And let's see if Wycliffe, they're going to, looks like they're going to, going to go for two again. You know, they did, they, they tried to kick the extra point after the first touchdown. Durgans' kick won a little wide left. Uh, Thomas Wenz bowled his way in for the two-point conversion on the last touchdown. And he'll line up next to Durgans in the backfield. It almost looks like they're going to do a, uh, like a direct snap to... But Durgans is going to throw instead. He's under pressure. Dodges one tackle. He's going to try to go in himself, and he does it as he leans across the goal line for the two-point Wycliffe conversion. And that means with four minutes and 32 seconds to go here in the first half, your score, Wycliffe 22 and East Tech 0. Well, for the third time tonight, ladies and gentlemen, there it is, your Wycliffe Swing Band with the fight song in the wake of a Wycliffe Blue Double touchdown as Wycliffe has now jumped out to a 22 to nothing advantage here with four and a half minutes to go here in the first half. And boy, after what happened at Brookside last week, Frank, this has got to be heartening for everybody on without, that Blue Double sideline. Um, without question, because uh, you could see that it's almost like they were a little shell-shocked once they got into the hole and, uh, you know, Things picked up in the second half, but tonight the Devils have come out as fast as they could based on the type of team that they have. And what we've seen has been um, what we've come to know with the Wickle Blue Devils. Well, and, you know, you hear coaches say this in every sport, and it's certainly true of high school football. There's no speed like game speed. You know, you can practice all you want. That's right. But, That's right. And, uh, you know, a lot of these kids are getting used to the pace of varsity football. And we see it here in the 22-0 Wycliffe lead. Number one, Sean Durgans with the ball teed up. He's going to take that kick, which is fielded at the East Tech 28, and uh, the return to head to about the 45-yard line. That's a nice return there by East Tech's number two, and once again, we apologize. We do not num have. Number three. Oh, it was actually number three, which is Malik Bennett. Thank you, Frank. I didn't have the glasses pulled you down. You are welcome. And, you know, as, as well as that LASIK surgery 20 years ago worked, I believe I've already gotten more than my money money's <laughs> worth, so... So are, are you saying you could be a Major League Baseball umpire? I could, I could, in fact, be a Major League Baseball umpire. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's going to be first and 10. East Tech, after a nice 17-yard return by Bennett, is going to find itself with a first and 10 situation from its own 45-yard line. And we'll see if the Scarabs can turn that field position into something positive. Thus far tonight, they've just not really been able to find a rhythm on offense, right. Frank. A lot of, you know, right. some, some botched snaps, some mental mistakes, and that just, boy, that'll, that'll stop an offense in a hurry. So uh, Scarabs have one the receiver split left and right, slot right, one in the backfield. Gaines is going to roll out to his right and keep it, and he's going to be nice. brought down by Gargiulo. Boy, what? An excellent open field tackle by Vince Gargiulo Without there. question. I mean, and Gaines was doing his best to try to shake and bake him, and Gargiulo wasn't having any of it. And, Frank, I wonder if that was meant as a pass and he just saw the pressure, or if that was, he was faking the pass to try to open up the run. But in any case, that was a loss of five. That was the net result of that play, which brings up second and 15 for East Tech. Ball back at the Scarab's own 40-yard line. And, you know, when you have athletes... <laughs> Frank, there's something to be said for athleticism. A guy like Vince Gargiulo, a multi-sport guy. Yep, and, and we've seen him do it on both sides of the ball. You know, return the touchdown, run, running the ball, and his open field tackling has been top-notch tonight. Well, here's Gaines with Huff behind him once again. 
And he will take it and he'll give to Huff right up the middle. He gets across the 40 yard line, but no farther than about the 41 and a half. Looked like Gavin Zerbeti came up and popped him. And Patrick Quinn as well making the hit. And that officially is gonna go down as a gain of one, third and 15 with the ball at the East Tech 41 yard line. Just over three minutes to go here in the first half. Your score, Wycliffe 22, and East Tech 0. The pursuit by the defense tonight has been very good. Very good. Yeah, reading their keys well. Yes. Well prepared. So third and 14 now officially. And Gaines takes the snap. He throws out. It's complete to number two, but Ooh. he falls across the Slip. 40. And I think he slipped. Yeah, I think you're right, Frank. Slipped there on the turf. And that's going to be maybe a loss of one. Right? And that was, uh, um, I was just going to say, that was Zerbeti again in there on that tackle. Zerbeti wearing the very distinctive red shoes here on the left side of the defense. And that's going to bring up a fourth down for East Tech. He might be an Elvis Costello fan. <laughs> With his red shoes. The red shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Most of the student body are going, what the heck's that guy talking about? Not the classes of the 70s and early 80s, though. So Banks to punt. He takes the snap. He gets off a high end over end kick, short kick, that is going to land just over midfield and be down there by the Scarab. So once again, Wycliffe's going to find itself in some very good field position as they'll take over first and 10 from, we'll see where they spot it, but about their own 47 maybe 48 yard line 151 to go here in the first half i have to say that now that the sun has kind of gone behind the tree line what a difference we'll take it beautiful night here mark you obviously went and turned up the air conditioning a little bit or the fan yeah they probably turned that big fan over there at lincoln electric <laughs> our way <laughs> So quarterback Sean Durgans gets the play from the sidelines. He'll bring it in. He lets his offensive teammates know what that play is, and Wycliffe will come out with receivers split left and right. Once again, Vince Gargiulo in a slot left position. Thomas Wenz in the backfield. And Durgans is going to throw. He's rolling left. He looks, and it's intercepted. Malik Bennett intercepts it at his own 43-yard line, and he'll get up across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. I think that's where he, he made the mistake of allowing the rush to get to him, and he basically put up a wounded duck. Yeah, he had a receiver open downfield, but that would have been awfully hard for him to get it that far, throwing against his body, to your point right. earlier, Frank. Yep. So that's something you learn. And East Tech's going to get the ball right back, and maybe a little mental momentum, if nothing else. Yeah, officially... With the ball placed at the Scarab's own 47 yard line. 138 to go here in the first half. East Tech trailing this one 22 to nothing. Both teams are down to one timeout remaining here in the first half. The first game on the brand new field here at Wickliffe Memorial Stadium. And here we go with East Tech. Gaines takes it. He's going to throw over the middle. It's intercepted. Number 59 there for Wycliffe. That's Shane Causey. And he was, he was looking to get Quay Glover in the flat there. So both teams trading turnovers. And boy, so that's... That is, uh, what, three interceptions in the space of... Uh, not very long, <laughs> I'll say. A couple minutes. Yeah, a couple of minutes here. So, and you know, and I give Causey credit. He was dropping back in coverage, and he had just turned around, and it was kind of a whoa, here it is. And he had the presence of mind to hold on to it. And the Devils have a minute and a half of which they could try to do something here, yet in the first half, leading 22 to nothing, here in their season home opener for the 2021 high school football season. So this is where we were about a minute ago in real time. That's right. That's <laughs> maybe right. With the, the ball maybe a yard further downfield. First and 10, Wycliffe from its own 48-yard line. Blue Devils looking to add to their 22 to nothing lead. Quarterback Sean Durgans gives off there to Vince Gargiulo, and he is met by a host of scarabs. And I don't think he even got back to the line of scrimmage, Frank. I think he'll be just shy of that. Uh, it looks like they're going to they're gonna gift him and mark it 
at the line of scrimmage. Oh, so they did, okay, so he did get back to the 48 yard line, second and 10. And right now, quarterback Sean Durgans, he has three receivers bunched together on the left side, one receiver to the right, one in the backfield. And the Devils will have it first. Um, and there's a pass to Garjula. That, that was almost it. picked off. Yes, it was. As he fights his way, still on his feet across the 40, across the 35, great. Run after the catch by Vince Garjulo, and as you said, Frank. That almost was six the other way. And it looks like E.J. Mester is down at uh, about the East Tech 43-yard line. So we have an official timeout. Let's hope E.J.'s doing okay, shaking up on that particular play. But that's going to be a long gain for Wycliffe there of about 20 yards from the, the Blue Devils going from their own 48 down to the East Tech 32, and uh, you know, when he caught that, when he managed to catch it, when it was just out of the reach of the East Tech defender, Frank, he was about at the line of scrimmage. You know, right. that was, that's right. That was just a little swing pass out of the backfield, and uh, he broke about three tackles, and was finally brought down near the Wycliffe sideline, as we said at the Scarabs 32 yard line. 47 seconds to go here in the first half. Looks and like E.J. Mester is the one who was shaken up for Wycliffe, he's down at about the 43-yard line. They're attending to him at this point. He's being attended to by Lake Health trainer Ms. Hannah Reinhardt, who's been a top-notch trainer for Wycliffe Sports these last few years. Uh, I get to do a lot of PA announcing for various Wycliffe Sports. Talk to Hannah all the time. She is uh, she's one of the better ones, Frank. We're, we're lucky to have her here at Wycliffe. EJ now sitting up. We talked about EJ before. How uh, you know, he plays that quarterback position, and you know could find himself in a couple of years taking the snaps from under center. But in the meantime, plays uh, on offense, plays a defensive back position as well. Based uh, on the fact that it looks like the, they've got him drinking water, it's probably a cramp. Is going to be my guess. Here's some EJ Mester trivia, Frank. I asked his mother what EJ stood for, and his dad's name is Eric. I believe Eric James. So he's named after his father, except only with initials. EJ. I see. You didn't need to know that, and but now you do. So Something tells me that tomorrow's blog from you, Scott, will be <laughs> about how EJ, EJ was named after his father. I need with, topics, man. There you go. I need topics. So good to see EJ coming off under his own power. Yeah, but in the meantime, the Blue Devils, after that big catch and run by Vince Gargiulo, find themselves with the ball first and ten at the East Tech 32-yard line. Already leading this one 22 to nothing. And here in the closing minute of the first half, looking to see if they can add to that tally. Sean Durgans, one receiver to the left. That's White Beamer. Jude Devaney, closer on the right side. One wing back, one in the backfield. That's Gargiulo. And Durgans is going to throw. He's going to go try to go long. And it's picked off at about the five-yard line there by number two of East Tech. Still on his feet across the 15, across the 20, and across the 30. Breaks another tackle across the 40. Takes it across midfield. Durgans himself is finally able to wrestle, wrestle wow. him out of bounds. That was a great return. <laughs> at the Wycliffe 34-yard line. And I'll tell you, you know, Durgans was, was going for it all down there. Just overthrew his receiver a little bit. And he had time in the backfield. You know, he, he rolled to the right and uh, had good blocking from the offensive line, but it's like he just put it a little bit too far, and it was, uh, it was picked off on a good return there by number two of East Tech. And now we've got an official timeout on the field. I believe we have a scarab who was shaking up on that particular play. He's down on one knee out on the field, so... Uh, started off as a it was good, it was a pretty quick first quarter, Frank, and then yeah, suddenly I'm, you get three second, blue double touchdowns, you get some turnovers and people you know, timeouts, <laughs> and injuries, and yeah, it's uh, you know we're looking at uh, this game's a little more than an hour old, and thankfully that East Tech player is up and doing well. So now the Scarabs with 26 seconds left are 34 yards away from getting on the board for the first time tonight. Well, it would be the first time this season. And it would, in fact, be the, their first score if they're able to do it. But this uh, Blue Devil defense is going to have something to say about that. And Wycliffe will have the ball to start the second half. So we'll see what Coach Daryl Forrest and his charges can dial up here for East Tech. 
late in the first half, trailing by three touchdowns. And you see, you know, some of the, the one of the byproducts of that small roster is a lot of guys going two ways, Frank. Both teams, certainly, but right. certainly we see it for East Tech. And a lot of guys starting to feel the effects of a warm late August night in Wycliffe, Ohio. I think there was an album once released by the name of Hot August Night. And I think <laughs> Neil Diamond was thinking of us. <laughs> so the Scarabs quarterback, Johan Gaines, looking to the sideline. And I think they were short on offensive linemen. It wasn't so much the play he needed as a teammate to protect him. And now they're going to take a timeout. That'll be the last timeout for the Scarabs for this half. So well, looking to the end zone uh, to my left, Frank, the east end zone, the Wycliffe Swing Band lined up. They will have a show here coming up shortly at halftime. Go ahead, my friend. I think I interrupted you. No, no, um, not at all. All I was going to say is, once again, tonight's webcast is made possible through the Wycliffe School Alumni Association. Uh, if you've had a chance, uh, check on the um, um, webpage. Thanks to my webcast buddy, Mark Tennant, and design, helped design and uh, launch a brand new website this past Sunday. Mark, great job. And um, Well done, brother. Yeah. Good stuff. Very, very shortly, we'll have more exciting news to share with you about events um, happening with regard to the Wycliffe School Alumni Association. So, should any of you have interest, please let us know, and um, we'd be happy to have you join us. All right, so the teams are ready to go again. 26 seconds to go here in the first half, 22-0 Wycliffe. First and 10 East Tech after that long interception return. They are about as deep in Wycliffe territory. This is the second deepest penetration they've had into Wycliffe territory. Gaines takes the snap, drops straight back. He's going to go for it all, launches it, and it is... Almost intercepted there by Wickless number 10, Chase Bonadio. Actually, that almost ended up off the hands of Bonadio into the hands of the wide receiver number two, which was down at the goal line. And, and kudos to the East Tech receiver who actually turned defender there when he saw right. that uh, this was going into the hands of Bonadio. But nice job there by the Wickless secondary getting back to cover that long pass. And if you're the Scarabs there, why not? You know, why not go for it all there in one play? Well, and the other thing is you're out of timeouts at this point. You've right. got 19 seconds. You've got to chew up a lot of, you know, real estate very quickly. That took seven seconds off the clock. 19 seconds to go here in the first half that is just refusing to die. Agreed. Here from Memorial Stadium. But you know what? It's a three-touchdown Wycliffe lead, and I think we'll take that any day. For Without you, question. So. <laughs> Without question there, Scott. So second and 10, the Scarabs send one receiver left, one right, a slot receiver on the left side. Their running back, Huff, is behind quarterback Gaines. Gaines is going to take it, and I believe the Scarabs went just a hair sure, early yep. before the snap. And that will, in fact, be the call of false start. So that's going to take the ball back to about the 39-yard line. As I think a, uh, we're going to have to put a second back on the clock there which now reads 18 seconds. You know, one of the things, observations I had from last week's game, Scott, was for a first game, there were very few penalties on the Wickler Blue Devils last week. That's true. Pretty disciplined. Yep. In general, that's a big part of yep. learning how to play this game at this level. Mental discipline. And the Wickler coaches know it, and they teach it well. All right, here we go again. Second and 10, East Tech. From the Blue Double 39-yard line, Gaines takes it. He's going to throw it to the left side. Has a man wide open. Caught at about the 38-yard line there and wrestled out of bounds. That receiver's number one. Quade and the Glover. clock's going to continue to run. He did not get out of bounds with eight seconds to go. And I don't think the Scarabs are going to be able to get back to the line of scrimmage. That was well done by the Wycliffe defense there to keep the receiver in bounds. And the first half is going to run out, so... The interception does not end up coming back to harm Wycliffe. So we reach halftime here at Memorial Stadium with your score, Wycliffe 22 and East Tech 0. And as is tradition here on the Worldwide Blue Devil Network, we will step aside and allow you to enjoy the halftime performance from your Wycliffe High School swing band. We'll catch you in the third quarter.
and gentlemen, Weekly Fight School is proud to present, under the direction of Mrs. Pamela Graves, Assistant Director, Mr. Vic Manfredi, and Major and Advisor, Mrs. Katie Shy. It's the often imitated, but never yet duplicated, Weekly Fight School.
are True Line Industries at the diamond level, and at the platinum level, all of the wild fun, Hammond Construction, and Abani Hospitality, Atul Patel. Thanks also to our silver sponsors, which include Petty Pizza, Vittorio's, Gateway Diner, and Cardio Drumming by WP Fitness. The Swing Man and the people of Wycliffe, thank you for your generosity. Well, the Isley Brothers wrote it, the Beatles covered it, and Otis Day and the Knights repopularized it. All of them paved the way for this very special occasion tonight when the swing band puts its own stamp on it. Featuring senior trumpet soloist and third generation swing band member Everett Chappell. It's the song that makes us all want to shout. Thank <laughs> you. 
50-50 raffle tickets. You're going to want to take a look at them now. Tonight's winner will take home $343. This is a blue ticket, and the winning number is 98170-1. Again, that's 98170-1. If you have that winning blue ticket number, please come up to the press box and explain your $343 prize.
And we're back here on the Worldwide Blue Devil Network. Here is uh, halftime. We'll be winding down here shortly. Uh, once we get back to action, the uh, Wickle Blue Devils are out to a 22 to nothing lead on the uh, Scarabs from East Tech High. And Scott, quite a turnaround from last week, I would have to Absolutely. say. Absolutely. I mean, you know, obviously they're, you're never perfect. There's always things to work on, but... Uh, night and day, I think, applies here in a lot of ways. Without you know, they question. Were, they were, I think there was some shell shock last week with some, some of those young kids playing their first varsity football game. They got down, you know, fairly early. And here tonight, they battled from the very first snap. And they're, as you've said more than once, Frank, they're playing an athletic opponent that, you know, may be small, but they're tough. And we saw in the long interception return there in the last minute of the first half that you get some open field for a couple of those East Tech guys, yep. and you're in for a whole heap of trouble. So it was uh, you know, fortunate that the Blue Devils were able to deny uh, East Tech from getting into the end zone and have this 22 nothing lead. And actually, when you think about it, they've gotten in the end zone three times, twice on account of the defense. That's right. Uh, you know, they That's recovered right. the fumble yeah. after in, in the first quarter, and then Gargiulo picked it, you know, it was a pick six uh, deep in the um, East Tech territory, and then... The other uh, touchdown, a uh, touchdown run that was done by. Um, uh, oh well, let's see. Uh, what, Did Durgans? Durgans had his second had, had his second touchdown of the season. That's right. Yeah, uh, Durgans yeah. was able to get in yeah. the end zone there in the second quarter. So the Devils are back out on the field, um, loosening up as uh, East Tech. They're making their way back out on the field, and we'll be. Uh, back to football action here probably in the next couple of minutes is uh, what's been a rather warm and humid Friday evening here on the, in late August. It, it, it never fails. It always seems like the first home game is hot like one of these hot, humid and nights. It, and it's going to extend into the weekend. Right. And as tomorrow, mm -hmm. the Wycliffe cross-country teams open up their season as they go, travel to Hawken. And they'll be running at the Hawken Invitational. 16 schools at that one. That's a nice big meet. Yes, it is. And uh, th those who have followed Blue Devil cross country over the years will know every time you go to Hawken, it's about 100 degrees. So there's, well, there's going to be plenty of hydration tonight among those, the Harriers, as they call cross country runners, which include one Mr. Jack Tennant from the class of 2023, my youngest as well, and Mark's nephew. So looking forward to that tomorrow as well. Well, and... This will be one of those nights that we will long for later in the season. I, yeah, exactly. By the time you get to late October, you think, and it's 40 degrees. And, <laughs> and sometimes raining. Right. Or the rain's going sideways. And, but um, Yeah, that's, uh, the high school football season definitely marks the change of seasons as well. So this is, uh, this is, and as you said, it's a good crowd here tonight, and it's just a nice way to open up this field. And uh, you know, we'll have a, you're generating a few trivia questions here as teams play their first games on this field. A trivia question that happened the other night uh, when the Wycliffe Lady Devils girls soccer team took on Chardon. The first ever official soccer goal scored on this field was scored by Blue Devils senior number eight, Brianna Butler, as she struck a really, really nice about 20 yard shot from the right side and hit twine on the far side of the net wow. to give uh, give the Devils a one nothing lead in that one. Unfortunately, uh, that wasn't able to hold up and they ended up falling two to one that one to Chardon. But that was a great game and a nice way to to open the, the field. It was nice to have a home player get the first goal. And Without now, of course, question. And you know, we mentioned the boys will be playing this Tuesday, August 31st, as they welcome in the Lutheran West Longhorns as well. And the. In football, the first points scored on this field. Sean Durgantz. Sean Durgantz basically recovering a fumble when East Tech had the ball. This was in the first quarter, but the Devils were able to christen their own field themselves um, by scoring first. So let's, let's challenge Shane and Colin, who are up here in the booth with us. One of you guys has to get the first ever boys soccer goal on this field Tuesday night. Do, oh. not, do not let Lutheran West get that first goal that's all i'm saying that's right and these guys are up for the challenge i think they're absolutely up for the challenge so. and, and 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 scott i have to say that i think it was very nice that the field has the colors that kind of parallel your current employer the goodyear tire and rubber company right and i'm, I'm still I'm, i knew it shane I'm looking up do you see the blimp <laughs> i think you missed it i think it was here earlier did a pass and had to go back to akron oh, colin right. saw it Colin saw it. I'm, I'm going to have sure. to have Eastwind come here and, and, <laughs> and float over the field, you know, all 750 pounds of a, a steam engine. Well, folks, the Blue Devils are coming back out on the field. They will have the football first here in the second half. 
um, as um, East Tech is getting their final instructions from the sideline. And we'll be back at it shortly. Blue Devils on top, 22 to nothing here on their home uh, season opener. Last week, Devils went to um, Sheffield Village and um, came away on the wrong side of the score there as they lost to Brookside. So we'll see if they can hang on here uh, as they're as of right now at a, a comfortable lead of 22 to nothing over the East Tech Scarabs. As Scott mentioned, next week the Blue Devils will travel to um, the county seat of uh, Lake County as they'll take on the Painesville Harvey Red Raiders. Um, and there have been some really good football games played on that field. If I remember served, I guess, a few years ago, I think there was a 99-yard touchdown run by Isaac Petway. That is true, which is, is uh, the school record, and it's going to be awfully hard to break that particular school record. Right. <laughs> Yeah, they, that on the turf there at uh, Kiwanis Park Field, home of uh, several teams. The Lake Erie College Storm plays there, Harvey Red Raiders. Our Blue Devils end up there for various sports from time to time, including track and football. So it looks like teeing the ball up for the Scarabs is number two. Uh, once again, we want to let everybody know it's not that we're not wanting to share names of our opponent tonight. We only have a handful of names that were given to Mark by their head coach, Daryl Forrest. So uh, number two, who we'll just know is number two, basically gets a high end over end kick's going to come down here and get fielded there, I think, by Gargiulo at about the 25. He's across the 30, 40, about the 43-yard line where he was brought down there by a host of scarabs from East Tech. So the Blue Devils will have it first and 10 to begin the third quarter with a on top on this one by a score of 22 to nothing. So, Frank, you know, at this point, I don't see the Devils uh, diverting from the script very, very no. much. You know, right. I mean, it's a, you're going to keep running your, you know, that pistol wing tee offense. You're going to do, you know, Durgance is going to keep it from time to time. Gargiulo and Wenz are going to share carries. You're going to go inside on the wingback counter occasionally. But Durgance has not been afraid to put it up, you know. Yeah. And, and they've, con you know, they've connected on some nice uh, receptions here tonight. So once again in the pistol, in the shotgun is Durgantz awaiting the snap. It's back. And the handoff to uh, Wentz goes over right tackle and kind of bull rushes his own way out to about the 50-yard line. A very nice gain of about seven on the play where he's met by the second, well, I should say the linebacking crew of the uh, Scarabs. It'll bring up a second and three ball right on the midfield stripe right there by that lovely W and the Blue Devil insignia on the brand new artificial turf field here at Wickler Memorial Stadium. Snap is back again. It's um, Thomas Wentz. He's got the first down and then some into East Tech territory down to about the 41-yard line. And, Scott, it's almost like at halftime, Coach Purcello, it's like he's, he put some, he stoked the boiler there with a little bit of coal <laughs> yeah, like I do boy. with East Wind and Jake and Nick. You'd love and to see how he hits the hole. Man, I mean, you would have thought he's playing running back his whole life. Coach Tom Rosnick would love the way that he takes those handoffs, puts handoffs, puts two hands on the ball before contact, right. gets his head down, and makes the tacklers pay the price. We have an official timeout on the field. Is, it looks like number 10 going over to the sideline, possibly having a, um, an issue with some of the equipment. As uh, about ready to get back at it is now in the backfield lined up next to Durgantz is number six, Gargiulo. The snap is back. The handoffs to Gargiulo. Jukes his way on the left side. He's got some positive yardage. He's down inside the 35, down to about the 34, maybe the 33, where uh, it took a host of scarabs to bring him down. But once again, another positive gain, especially on first down. And we've got a timeout being taken. I think we had a Look, player shaken yeah, up, but not not too badly, fortunately. And it looks it looks like it. Oh, I think he just made his way off the field. Looks like that's uh, num is that number twenty one for the Blue Devils. But also, I believe East Tech had uh, someone maybe cramps there for the East Tech player. As we were saying earlier, these are the nights when you got to make sure you hydrate because if you don't, you're going to pay a penalty where you can get a pulled muscle, and it does look like. There's somebody being tended to by uh, East Tech as well as uh, for Wycliffe. I think it looks like Jude 
um, Jude Dev Devaney. He finally got it. Took me the third quarter, but we got it. Uh, is down on one knee and being tended to by the uh, Wycliffe trainer. And it looks like she's walking out there with a bottle of water. Jude, a six foot, 155 pound junior. One of, gosh, Frank, not too many juniors, about six juniors on the roster this year to go along with the four seniors and a host of sophomores and freshmen. So this is a team that uh, will be a little more on the experienced side in a couple of years, but in the meantime, it's a learning process. And based on what we've seen tonight, Scott, it, it seemed like the instruction they were given this week by the coaching staff, they took it to heart. We've seen some excellent stuff from the Blue Devils tonight, and if they continue this way, you know, who knows what could happen yet this season. So Frank, even, with, it, even with a young squad. Yeah, absolutely. Frank, it looks like actually uh, Gargiulo was shaking up oh. over on the play over there. They're helping him off. He is walking off in his own power there, but trainer Hannah Reinhardt attending to him. So it'll bring up a second and three for the Blue Devils. They're at the 34-yard line of the Scarabs. Devils send one wide, extremely wide, to the um, right side. A handoff against a Wentz who busts over right tackle, gets inside the 30s, got the first down and more. He has number 55 there for um, Darrell Forrest's crew of East Tech, brings him down, but it'll be a new set of downs for the Blue Devils. And, Scott, you got to think one of the things Wickler may want to be doing is just wear out East Tech, you know yeah, I mean? I a hot night like this. Um, and um, although the Scarabs have stayed in it, I mean, they've been very, you know, um, on top of it as best they can in this ball game. East Tech showing blitz, low snap. Durgans takes it, going to keep it on himself as he goes over the left tackle, gets down to about the 25-yard line on a keeper. And he got submarine there, Frank, and I think some of, the, some of those uh, linebackers for the Scarabs are learning, especially with Wens bullying the ball, that uh, you better hit low if you hope to make the tackle. Right. But... Um, but on that, and again, uh, it was a low snap. I didn't know if he was going to hand it off, although Wickliffe now taking a timeout as um, the Blue Devils making their way over towards the sideline to confer with Coach Purcello as um, it'll be second and six and 9.39 to go here in the third quarter. The Blue Devils up by a score of 22 to nothing in their season home opener for this 2021 season. So, Frank, we've been talking about some of the other Blue Devil fall sports teams. You know, we mentioned how a lot of our golfers uh, also play soccer. And, you know, the golf team, coached by Athletic Director Harrison McCall, really off to a nice start. They are led by senior Calvin Kakowski, who is consistently shooting, you know, low 40s, high, high 30s there in those nine-hole courses. And it's been nice to see that program come together well with some experience. Uh, also have had the chance to see a couple of times the Blue Devil volleyball team. Saw them against Crestwood the other day and Hawken last week. And, uh, you know, that is a team that lost some, some big weapons and is, you know, is trying to rebound from that. But, uh, you know, they're always fun to watch. They play hard, and they have a new head coach this year. Courtney Brasso has come in to take over the reins of the Wycliffe volleyball team. So good luck to them this season, as well as our golfers and soccer players and, of course, our Blue Devil football team as they lead this one 22-0 here in week number two. You know, let's give a shout out to all the athletic coaches because they always find a way to develop um, whatever teams they're yeah. working with. And that, that's a testament to the um, coaches of all the sports here at Wycliffe High School. Second and six, the snap back, they get a handoff there back to Gargiulo, who's um, down to about the 15-yard line. It's going to be a first down for Wycliffe. Boy, the line, Frank, is really getting a push. They really now. are. They, they, they're doing a great job. And the running backs are not only are they finding the hole, but, they're, but their timing tonight has been tremendous with regard to when to accelerate, when to, you know, when to juke, if you will. Yeah. And uh, we've seen that from Wentz. We've seen that from Gargiulo. And uh, once again, you know, very, very good strong running by the Wycliffe running backs. And I think, you know, offensive linemen, who, by the way, as a former running back, I will say, salt of the earth, those, those offensive linemen, is, uh, we have a timeout on the field right now, an injured Blue Devil. But there are a few things more frustrating to an offensive lineman than executing their assignment, blocking well, and a running back doesn't hit the hole he's supposed to. Right. Or, you know, instead of cutting it up, tries to get around the end and gets thrown for a loss when, in fact, there were five yards to be had inside. Right. So it's, you know, what you're saying 
it, it all works in sync. You know, the, the, the guys up front are more motivated if they know the guys carrying the ball are going to do what they're supposed to, hit the holes like they're supposed to. And again, this is how you see teams develop, one play at a time throughout a season. And, you know, I know we've chatted about some of the experiences from last year. How many times did we see Wycliffe be in a situation where it'd be like third and long, definitely a passing situation, third and uh, 10 yards or more, but they were able to run the ball effectively and get the first down. Yeah, 15, and, and a lot of yards it, at a time. Right. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. all came down to not only the line doing their job, opening the holes, but the running backs knowing how to negotiate, you know, across the line of scrimmage. So we'll wait to see who was down there for Wycliffe. I have a feeling it might have been Gargiulo once again. He's up on his feet. And um, I think it was. Frank. I think it yeah. was. I got a feeling it's probably a lot of cramping. I mean, at this point, it's. I mean, it's still warm. The sun is down. Um, it's 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 cooler here, but it is. It's a um, it's a steamer. Well, thankfully, you have the uh, the newly emergent Thomas Wenz. Obviously, wow. you know he's, he's the yep. only returning starter. We've known him certainly on the defensive side of the ball, but as an offensive force, this is a bit of a revelation for Wycliffe tonight. Yeah, Thomas, not only has he run the ball well, but he's he, the, the yards after, let's say, impact have been uh, amazing. I mean, he's just, you know, and, and known how to, you know, hit the hole. He's Tech showing, showing blitz. Uh, the ball was fumbled on the snap and about to be recovered by East Tech. Wentz picks it up gets wide to the right and gets within the five yard line down to about the four somersaults too. Somersault, at the end of that one. right <laughs> i mean what could have been a disastrous play because you're on the move turned out to be um, uh, a nice you know gift if you will and wickliffe now will have it first and goal with 855 to go here in the third quarter as they're down knocking on uh, the goal line door once again as they have it first and goal at the east tech four the snap, and they give it to Wentz. He's going up the middle. He keeps on his feet, and I think he made it, yes, into the end zone for the Blue Devil touchdown. And I think the Johnson & Johnson Corporation has just uh, exploded with some powder here on the sidelines as the Devils have now pushed their lead out to um, 28 to nothing on the four-yard touchdown run by Thomas Wentz. Frank, that's the uh, that's the pit crew. That's been an organized group of students uh, who have gotten together for football and basketball games in the last few years. They usually do it with a theme. It looks like tonight's theme must be Hawaiian because a lot of lays around people's necks and some Hawaiian shirts. And they are loving this as they cheer on their Blue Devils to what is now a 28 nothing lead and just three and a half minutes into the third quarter. And there's a lot of blue lit Halos walking around here. Devil horns. Devil yeah. horns. Yeah, they were selling those the uh, Wycliffe Football Parents Club tonight. Very cool. Selling some spirit wear, some light up devil horns, and the Wycliffe Football Program, which I always love to get every year. I think um, fall a, sports program, we should say. I think a particular steam engine needs some of those uh, devil horns. <laughs> I have a feeling he'll get it. I think you're right. <laughs> so uh, we're just awaiting to see what it'll be for the point after. I have a feeling that somebody for East Tech is um, being tended to by the coaching staff and the medical staff, uh, and we'll see what the Devils are going to do for the point after. So it's 28 nothing, 8.36 to go here in the third quarter. And, and, and Frank, I hate to say it, but, you know, East Tech, East Tech came in with 15 people. We've seen several guys go off with injury. You do get to a point, and we saw it happen with Richmond Heights here a year or two ago, well, I don't even want to say it, but you do get to a point where it's, it's tough to continue on in the game with the numbers you have. So right. hopefully those guys are doing okay. So the Devils looks like they're going to line up and go for two as once again in the backfield with uh, Durgantz is Thomas Wentz, the snap, and it's going to be Durgantz running up the middle, and he's into the end zone. So the two-point conversion is good, which not only does it make the score Wycliffe 30 to nothing, but at this point forward, as long as there's a 30-point uh, differential, we will go to the what we refer to as the um, the running clock. The running clock, which yeah. means that the um, when, while you have possession, the clock will continue to run. Meaning that even on an incomplete pass, the clock will not stop. I believe the clock will only stop with a change of possession. So 
With 8.36 to go here in the third quarter, the Blue Devils have pushed their lead out to 30 to nothing, and uh, they'll be getting ready to kick off as uh, they start the third quarter with a very impressive drive, uh, capped off on the touchdown run there by Thomas Wentz, his first touchdown as a Blue Devil, and then the two-point conversion um, by quarterback Sean Durgantz. So, Frank, you know, we were talking about the Blue Devils' schedule a bit. It does get more difficult in the second half of the season, but there are some, you know, competitive games and wins to be had, uh, you know, even beyond tonight. Now, next week we talked about they go to Harvey, Friday, September 3rd. That's going to be a tough one. Then they welcome in a, uh, a always game but small Fairport team two weeks from now, September 10th, here at Memorial Stadium. Then they travel to Brooklyn, and I know the Hurricanes have been a little up and down in recent years and have had their troubles uh, as well. So these, you know, there's there's a chance here to really build some momentum in the first half of the season yep. before you go you go into some tougher games against the likes of Lutheran West, Crestwood, Independence, Trinity, Cuyahoga Heights. Although in the case of Independence, it should be noted they lost almost as much as the Blue Devils, the right. the real Blue Devils did <laughs> from from last season. Yeah, and, and if you remember, we went into that game both teams undefeated of what was supposed to be a shootout and the Blue Devils, our Blue Devils, they basically had that game over in the first yeah, half. Yeah, they smacked them in the mouth. There's yes, no, they no did. other way to look at it. <laughs> so Dur- Durgantz has it teed up at the 40-yard line. Uh, three scarabs are back around the 20. A high pooch end over end is going to come down, bounce at about the 31-yard line. Number two picks it up. He's trying to swing wide to the right. He's across the 40, 45, about across the 50, still on his feet as a couple of Blue Devils are going to bring him down in Wycliffe territory. Excellent return there as we've seen number two, who's very athletic and has done some nice things for the Scarabs tonight on offense and defense, and a nice kickoff return there as he gets it back in um, the Scarabs will have it first and 10 from the Wycliffe 40-yard line. And we do have the Blue Devil down on the far side. And looks like he's trying to stretch out a cramp is by, by the looks of it. And, and Frank, you know, boy, I, I, again, I, you, you mentioned that we do not have a full East Tech roster. We're sorry about that. I'd love to know who number two is because he's a guy that you want to get the ball in the hands right. of. Because in open question. field, you know, I mean, not only does he have speed, he has quickness, and, you know, I think we've all – from watching football on TV, listening to commentators, know the difference between straight-ahead running speed and quickness of cuts and moves and, and just and, everything you do. And, and, and on that kickoff return, just like the long interception return that he had in the first half, he reads his blocks very, very well. Yeah, he, he, he probably very added well. 10 to 15 yards in that return by following the blocks. You That's know? right. Because a lot of times guys who are fast, they're just going to try to blow by everyone. And if you just have a little bit of patience, sometimes those blocks will develop in front of you from those, uh, those salt-of-the-earth linemen who maybe can't move as fast as you, but they're going to make their presence known. So with the running clock in effect, the clock has started. We're down to 7.50, third quarter, 30 to nothing Wycliffe, uh, wide left and right by East Tech. Quarterback looking to throw. He sets, he fires, and it's incomplete, and he was looking for number two. Uh, down there in the flat down, fell incomplete there at about the Wycliffe 34-yard line where Gavin uh, Zerbati was was there on the uh, in, um, on the and the coverage. So sorry, Scott, folks. I, I keep putting the roster in front of the camera. That's all right. I Mark, let me know that I've done it two or three I'm, times I'm tonight as well. I'm playing spotter tonight. I'm not used to it. So it'll be second and ten for East Tech. Ball at the Wycliffe 40. Clock running on a. Humid but delightful night as you hear everybody going, let's go Devils from the cheering section of the uh, grandstand tonight. Scarab send two wide to the left side with number two in the slot, one wide to the right. Quarterback in the shotgun, probably looking to throw. Yes, he's looking. He's gonna, gonna Looks like he's going to take off and run as he's got some nice yardage down to about the 31-yard line, gain of nine there where Gaines was looking to throw, but he, he pulled it down and took off for a, a gain of nine, where back there from the defensive backfield was uh, Patrick Quinn to bring him down. So it'll be third down, one to go for East Tech. And, Scott, I'm wondering, has East Tech um, in tonight's ball game uh, achieved a first down on offense? You know, they were deep in the, on the first drive. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. So, uh, we'll, 
And that's, the, that play had actually worked for them in the first right. half where you had the quarterback uh, – Gaines keeping it. So basically the Scarabs come out in the same basic formation as the last play. I'm going to guess they're going to probably keep the ball down as they do. They give it a number 10. He's got the first down and more. As he takes off, he's down to about the 10, maybe the 9, no, I'm sorry, about the 15 to 14 yard line where on that carry was Jordan Huff. Chase Bonadio coming up to make the hit there. So with just under five and a half to go in the third quarter, East Tech is on the move here for the um, their deepest penetration in, into Wycliffe territory as it'll be first and 10 scarabs at the Wycliffe 14-yard line. On this beautiful, brand-new artificial surface that um, the Blue Devils have been desiring for many a year. It was basically brought here during the offseason. A snap is... Um, the quarterback, again, is going to take off around the left side at the 10, 5. He's into the end zone for the East Tech touchdown. As I think that's the first time that the Scarabs have made their way into the end zone this season. And a nice 14-yard run there by um, number 5, Johan Gaines, the quarterback. And, you know, Frank, this was not against... A lot of subs for Wycliffe. You know, that was uh, Wycliffe still, I, I think, got mo most of its first-string defense out there. That was a play the Scarabs had a lot of success with in the, in the first half, and it was a little surprising they weren't going back to it until this drive. So that's not the last time we're going to see Johan Gaines keep that ball on designed quarterback, uh, quarterback runs. So now the fact that uh, East Tech has brought the score within 30 points the, we'll go back to a normal operating clock. So 4.52 to go in the third quarter. The Scarabs are going to line up for a two-point attempt. Gains the quarterbacks in the shotgun. He's got Huff right behind him in a pistol. The snap is back. Gains looking to throw. He sets. He fires. And it's in and out of the hands of the receiver in the end zone, which means the two-point conversion is no good, making your score Wycliffe 30 East Tech, six. So the band is on its third quarter break, Frank, which means they won't play the fight song, which I suppose means... You and I have to do it. Exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. Well done. I don't think uh, we're going to have a lot of requests for the album version of that particular song. Well, um, Scott, you never know. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, we've put up with Inagata De Vita for a long time. So, <laughs> all right, going back deep for Wycliffe. It looks like uh, number six, Gargiulo, is back at about the 20-yard line. He's flanked by a couple of Blue Devils up at about the 25. And uh, number two will be teeing it up for the uh, Scarabs of East Tech as they were able to find the end zone here in the third quarter. So the Blue Devils kickoff return team on the field. And lining up on the near side here is number 72, Blake Promozik, a sophomore who's going to be ready to block for his compatriots. High end over end kick is going to come down. It's going to be fielded there. I'll get you a name here in a Devaney. moment. Devaney was able to field it at about the 35-yard line and is brought down there by a host of scarabs. So the um, Blue Devils will have it first and 10 with 4.55 to go here in the third quarter on their own 35-yard line. So, so, Frankie, you had mentioned how uh, the center of the freshman, Alex Cunningham, was practicing his snaps over there uh, on the sideline. He was really looking sharp on those, and uh, I think we're going to see that. Hopefully we'll see that translate into game action here. Alex, one of the, uh, the big three who are north of three, as we've mentioned a couple of times tonight, the 6-foot, 305-pound freshman, has a bright future playing along that Wycliffe offensive line. Getting a lot of experience, you know, a freshman. as uh, Starting. Yep. As he'll be ready to snap it back to the quarterback, Durgantz, who's in that shotgun formation. 
as a uh, d- delayed handoff there to looks like is that I think Gargiulo who was going over right tackle and uh, once again another Blue Devil down. It looks like Chase um, Benadio, who's he's in some pain. It looks like. But it wasn't after until Gargiulo was able to get a gain of six on that play. It'll be out to about the Wycliffe 41. And when we get back to action, it'll be second down and four for the Blue Devils. And, you know, Scott, talking about length of the quarters, you know, you get these official timeouts due to injury and things of that nature. That'll, you know, that'll stretch the that'll game lengthen out. It. You know, Frank, I was thinking back, and this must have been eight or nine years ago, we had a season opener here when it, very similar conditions, back when the Ronaldo boys, uh, Nick and Rocco, were carrying the ball for Wycliffe, where it seemed like every other play, it was mostly cramps, but every right. other play was an injury, and that ended up being, you know, pushing three hours on that game. Yep. I think we have a very similar situation here. And, uh, you know, I see it with a cross-country runner in my house. You know, coaches can preach hydration all you want, but we're talking about 14, 15, 16, 17-year-old kids who may or may not listen <laughs> all the time to right. them. Uh, well, in that case, though, I think Chase, that made a, I think he just took a pop there on that particular play. Well, he, he's up and heading to the sideline. It looked like he wanted to go back into the huddle, but as the rules have it, you have to come out for at least one play. So um, we're about ready to get back to action here as the Devils are lining up. You know, they operate in a no-huddle offense. They've got one wide receiver extremely wide to the left, one wide to the right. And uh, I'm thinking it looks like um, Thomas Munns is to the left of the quarter, I'm sorry, to the right of the quarterback. Now Gargiulo, and um, it, Durgant's on a keeper. He's, he's got the first down. He's into East Tech territory, down to about the 40-yard line. Nice run as uh, he had a, I think all of it, you know, that's a step two, Scott. When the quarterback is able to fake not only the other team out, but us out, you know he's He's handled yeah, the things correctly, and now we've got another. Uh, that's Sean Durgans who's down right here, so I think we're going to have to see someone else take the snap. Well, not only Durgans being down, but we got somebody down for East Tech as that's well. That's true. Now, I, I will tell you, part of what made that play, Frank, was the way the fake was the fake handoff was executed to Garjula. Right. Both, both Durgans and Garjula executed that very, very well, and almost the entire right side of the East Tech defense bit on that particular fake, and that's what opened up a nice hole for Sean Durgans, who had a great run in his own right it, as it, well. It, and with the wing tee and the pistol formation that Wycliffe runs, those are the little intangibles that you've got to pr- pull off to make this offense be special, and we saw an example of it on that last play. So let's hope Sean's doing okay. Hannah Reinhardt, the trainer, earning her keep tonight. Yes, she's going to put in for overtime, I think. And it does look like a cramp. She's pulling on, on the foot of, pushing on the foot of Durgans as, as a teammate, just trying to stretch both of those legs out. And it looks like they're doing the same for the um, East Tech player, which I think is one of the interior defensive linemen. He's now sitting up. Frank, I, this has got to be a case of uh, me misremembering the past. <laughs> and I, I hate to pull it back in my day. I do not remember this many cramps back when I, I played for Wycliffe. And we drank out of a hose with holes cut in it. I, I so get I don't it. know <laughs> during practice. <laughs> well, but you got to wonder how many times, you know, you know when, when the guys probably should have been pouring the Gatorade or the water down tonight, they, yeah, they may right. not have. So and Sean Turgans is, you know, getting the crowd fired up. He, and he's fired up. <laughs> so and he will have responds. he'll have to come out for at least one play. So we'll see who goes in at. Uh, as I think the, that's EJ Mester. Yep. The sophomore, 5'8", 140 pound backup quarterback will be in for at least one play for the Blue Devils. As also number looks like on the far side. I think it's number 53 for the Scarabs is being um, escorted off to their sideline. So hopefully both players will be A-OK and back at it here very shortly. At the rate we're going, Scott, I think our vocal cords will get cramped. (laughs) So the snap on a delay goes to Gargiulo. He's breaking into the open field, the 30. He's inside the... 25 and run out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. 
were there to run him out of bounds was number 10, Jordan Huff of the um, East Tech Scarabs. Nice uh, little delayed action there. And, you know, they've gone to Gargiulo quite a bit tonight, and he's, he's answered the call. I think this is going to be a happy film session tomorrow for these Blue Devils, Frank. So it looks like they're going to let Mester come back on. M Mester is going to remain in at quarterback. He's in the shotgun. Next to him is Gargiulo on the left side. Snap back, hand off to Gargiulo. He's uh, inside the 20. He's uh, met by a host of scarabs down at about the nine yard line of East Tech. He's got to get, uh, he made it. It's going to be first and goal, Wycliffe. And, a scarab's and, player and we've down. got a, a scarab down on one knee, so we've got another official timeout. 3.44 to go here in the third quarter. To our friends, um, Mitch and Michelle Lane in Chicago, at the rate this game is going, you guys could bring us breakfast back from Chicago. <laughs> so, Frank, we did mention that tomorrow the Wycliffe Cross Country Runners will be traveling to Hawkins School on County Line Road, where they'll be one of 16 schools competing in the Hawkins Invitational. So good luck to them tomorrow. Well, we're about ready to get back at it. As the snap is back, the ball's on the ground. As they're going to, um, once again, a bit of a ex bad exchange between center and quarterback. And luckily, um, Mester. <laughs> Mester was able to fall on it, but back at the 20-yard line. So it's going to be a loss of about 11 on that play. So we'll go, instead of first and goal from the 9, we're going to be first and goal from the East Tech 20 as making his way back out onto the field is number one, Sean Durgantz, who will go back in at quarterback for the Blue Devils. Mester, Clock, Mester no. will stay in. Sorry, Frank. Mester will stay in, and he is split wide left. So a versatile young man. Clock under three minutes here in the third quarter. As um, a delay, as um, um, Durgant's going to um, keep it as he goes wide to the right side. He gets down to about the 18-yard line. And he, he kept it after a fake to Gargiulo, who was going to the left side. As a host of scarabs were, were, were there to meet him, bring him down after a gain of two. So it's going to be third and Third and goal from the East Tech 18-yard line. So this is going to be uh, two-down territory for the Blue Devils. Yep. Chances are it'll probably um, go to the air on this play. And now in at the tailback position once again is Thomas Wenz. Three receivers the bunched snap. right. Durgant's looking to throw. He sets. He fires. Looking for the end zone. And in and out of the hands of Gargiulo after it went. Looked like in and out of the hands of a couple of scarabs. But we have a defensive holding call on East Tech, which is going to give the Blue Devils a first down here, Frank. So we got a scarab down on one knee at about the 25 Official picking up the yellow flag at about the 14-yard line, just awaiting the signal from the gentleman in the striped shirts. And they're gonna looks like yes, they're gonna be marking it off. Wow, that's a Scott. That's a 15-yarder. So is that pass interference? He he signaled defensive holding. So now, but, but now they've got it marked as third down goal from the nine. You would think if it's defensive holding, it's going to be an automatic first down. And now the Blue Devils are going to take a timeout with 1.48 to go here in the third quarter. The Wickle Blue Devils ahead in this one by a score of 30 to 6. As the Blue Devils are christening their brand new artificial surface field beautiful in the, in the way that it's done once again want to tip our hats or tip of the blue devil tail if you will to uh the administrators joe specia uh julie ramos and the faculty and administrators of the wickliffe school system to make this happen 
Long overdue. As the Blue Devils are huddled up near their sideline with Coach Purcello, as they'll talk o- talk it over on this what will be a third and it'll be third and goal from the East Tech nine. And I'm just it's just odd to me that if it was holding defensive holding, how that was not an automatic first down. I'm just guessing it may have been a 15 yard penalty that did not carry an automatic first yeah, it was down. Just I mean, the, the, you know the. Official on the side most definitely signaled defensive holding right. pointed toward the, the East Tech side. So in any case, the uh, the Blue Devils now back down inside the 10 yard line where they were before the uh, the snap where they had troubles. At least from the from from where they're at now, Scott, you've got third and goal, and you have at least you know it's two down territory to get the nine yards to get back into the end zone. So we'll see what happens as um, Gargiulo now is lined up in a pistol right behind Durgantz. One wide to the left side as Durgantz looking to throw. He's under pressure. He's got good pursuit there by a number of members from the, the Scarabs, and he's going to get sacked back at the 20-yard line. That's one where he needed to just turn around and heave the ball out of the end zone. So going to be a loss of about 11 on that play. That was number three, Malik Bennett, who finally caught up to him. Sean did his best (laughs) to juke a few of those defenders, but after a while, Frank, it was just too many of them and too much contained. So it'll bring up fourth and goal with the ball now sitting at the East Tech 20-yard line. Thomas Wentz now in the backfield. He's going to line up to the right side of the quarterback, Durgantz. I'm going to guess here, Scott, that we're going to see some pressure come in from the, yep, they're, they're showing blitz as Durgant's looking to throw. He sets, he fires, and it's going to fall incomplete at about the five-yard line, and that'll turn the ball back over to East Tech. So with 52 seconds to go here in the third quarter, it keeps the score Wycliffe 30 and East Tech 6. Well, it was too bad. Frank, to see that, uh, you know, there were some impressive plays on that drive. It would have been nice to grab the momentum right back from East Tech after the Scarabs got on the board for not only the first time in this game, but the first time this season. And uh, a couple of uh, mistakes, one of the mental variety, a couple of the physical variety. Yep. And uh, and the Blue Devils come up, come away with no points on that particular drive. So we'll see what the Scarabs are are capable of doing here as they now have it first and ten. The ball is sitting at about their own 19-yard line as um, their very talented quarterback, number five, Johan Gaines, is making his way into the huddle as uh, they'll now set up again in a shotgun pistol-like formation where number 10, Jordan Huff, lines up basically behind him at the 10-yard line. They've got two wide to the right side, two wide to the left side, Gaines looking to throw. He sets. He fires. It's complete to number three, who's taken off, and he's going to be gone for a touchdown. 81 yards. 81 yards. That's our friend number two there, Frank, I think. (laughs) Yep. And, um, you know, you you don't want to get too comfortable as East Tech now has on a, you know, a one-play drive, 81 yards. They hit him in the flat, and he was able to juke past the Wicklet defender, and... um, Score on a extremely. Yeah, and you know, Frank, we had a defender commit to try to leave his feet and try to tip the ball, and boy, you better be sure you're going to get it because otherwise, uh, I think we saw <laughs> we saw what happens there. So, with 36 seconds to go in the third quarter, this puts an interesting little twist on this one. It sure does. Wycliffe was up 30 to nothing. We had the running clock not too long ago, and if East Tech is able to get the two-point conversion here, they're suddenly two scores down, two touchdowns and two two two-point conversions, which uh, changes the complexion of the game, certainly. So um, in this regard, you have a little bit of a momentum shift. You know, the Devils were head first and goal at the nine-yard line, and uh, a few things go the wrong way. They turn the ball over on downs, and um, one play later. So now we've got... Uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that's going to be probably taunting or something that's going to be uh, called on East Tech. And um, the officials are conferring on something at about the 40-yard line. Well, it's interesting. You know, Wycliffe is, the defense is out there ready to defend against the two-point conversion. 
And East Tech has huddled up over on its sideline for an extended period of time. And, you know, you only have so much time to get up there without calling a timeout and running the two-point conversion. Well, last week at Brookside, Scott, I noticed that there were a couple times, it was almost like five minutes would go before Brookside would go out on the field to kick off or run a, uh, you know, to run a conversion. And, uh, but there's some kind of conference going on by the officials. And Wycliffe now is not back by the goal line. So are, are they going to take the points off the board? I don't think so, are they? Uh, Coach Mars Purcello is out to talk to the referee just to find out what's going on. The Wycliffe coaching staff tonight going with the dark blue Wycliffe polos and the khaki pants with the dark hats. We've got personal foul against East Tech. And Scott, they're gonna take the point. They're gonna take the points off the board, Scott. Wow. They're putting the ball back at the Wycliffe 40-yard line. So, so Frank, uh, that had to have happened during the run. Right? Yes. That, that, that would have had to have happened during the run. So let's see what, but this. So that was, I see. So they called both. Or was the personal foul? I don't know. Uh, and, and, but they did take the points off the board. In any case. Wow. So. There goes Gaines. Gaines on a keeper. He's going to get down to about the Wycliffe. They started at the Wycliffe 40-yard line. He's going to get down to about the um, Wycliffe 34-yard line. Clock running, 19 seconds to go. As um, Dergantz brought him down, it'll bring up a second and four for the Scarabs. That was an odd, odd, sequence, wasn't odd it? sequence of events there. So we'll see what happens here as uh, we're about the clock to about run out, and it does run out. Um, so after three quarters of play here from Wycliffe Memorial Field, your score, the Wycliffe Blue Devils, or the Wycliffe Blue Devils, 30, and the East Takes, uh, I'm sorry, East Tech Scarabs, 6. Here's your fight song. Well, Frank, we did get the third quarter over. We weren't sure it was ever going to end, and wow. it had its share of bizarre <laughs> events. And uh, at 9.20 Wycliffe time, 9.20 p.m. here on this Friday night, we now begin the fourth quarter. Uh, uh, um, normally, Scott, at this time, we're done. We're, we're packing up. Yeah. We're packing up at this point, absolutely. So um, East Tech is going to look to regain the points it had taken off the board as the Scarabs will start the fourth quarter, facing a second-and-four situation from the Wycliffe 34-yard line. Quarterback Johan Gaines takes the snap. He's going to drop straight back. He looks. He throws down the left side, and it's intercepted by Jude Devaney. And Devaney's still on his feet across the 30, the 35, the 40. Devaney across midfield and breaks a tackle still on his feet and finally brought down at the East Tech 42-yard line. Well done by number 21, wow. Jude Devaney, to snuff out what had been a momentum-shifting drive, it seemed, for East Tech, Frank. Uh, Scott, East Tech on one play went 81 yards on a pass play for what appeared to be a touchdown, but apparently some shenanigans on the field brought them back out to the Wycliffe 40. The points were taken off the board. And two plays later, the Devils are able to pick it off. And now the Devils are in East Tech territory at about the East Tech 42. Outstanding work there by the junior, number 21, Jude Devaney. So, Some Devils are growing up tonight, 
Scott. A absolutely. Big time. Absolutely is. Senior offensive lineman Kevin McCabe goes out there to take on some blocking duties. First and 10 Wycliffe at the East Tech 42-yard line very early here in the fourth quarter. There's a handoff to Thomas Wenz, and he's going to be met in the backfield, but he breaks that tackle, gets past another defender across the 30, 25-20, finally wrestled out of bounds at about the East Tech 12-yard line. And Frank, wow! if you would have told me tonight that Wycliffe's leading rusher may have been Thomas Wenz, I would have taken that bet. Absolutely. And number 10, Jordan Huff, coming up from his defensive back position, had to be the one to take Wenz out of bounds or else he was gone. He's got a little bit of get up and go in him. I mean, not only is he strong and he hits the holes well, but he's got a little bit of speed. We're going to see the freshman running back, number 28, Riot, uh, Wyatt Bamer. Come on, number, as we said, number 28. He's actually going, he's listed as a running back, but he is lined up as a wide receiver, split to the right side. There's a wing back to the right. Actually, wing backs left and right. Now we've got a whistle. Timeout East Tech. The Scarabs now will take their first time out of the second half. And uh, Frank, why not? <laughs> we, we, have, we, we have everything else delaying us here tonight. Let's, let's make sure we use up all our timeouts. Uh, uh, with, without question. <laughs> but again, you know, in, in the Scarabs' defense, they come in here with 15 or 16 guys on the roster. Lot, lots of cramps, a couple of, you know, look like gameplay injuries that happen. They're still battling. And were it not for, uh, we're not sure if they were separate on Sportsmanlike and personal foul penalties or if that was all part of one exchange. But in any case, were it not for that, you know, they'd only be two scores down uh, staying in this one. And Wycliffe really looking to, uh, you know, put the nail in the coffin here because a touchdown here, Frank, then would put the Blue Devils back up by 30-plus, get that running clock going. And, you know, if you're East Tech, you know, Wycliffe hasn't shown a lot of ability to stop that quarterback keeper. You know, Durgans has gotten Gaines a couple of times, gotten him up high and wrestled him down. But, you know, Gaines, that's a great play to go to when you're facing a second or third and long. And the Scarabs have gone to that in those situations and done well. So, you know, they do have a few, few tricks up their sleeve. Their problem is they just haven't been able to stop Wycliffe from putting together, you know, some pretty long drives. Correct. And be able to stop, uh, bring the Devils down in the open field. Yeah. I mean, yep. you know, the running of Gargiulo and Wentz has been, um, you know, money in the bank for the Blue Devils tonight. So here we go again. And it's going to be, going to be first and 10 Wycliffe at the East Tech 13-yard line. Durgans takes it. He gives to Wentz. And Wentz is met behind the line of scrimmage, fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, but no farther than that. And Wentz comes out of the pile with the ball. Young man, leave it on the ground. Save yourself a throw. <laughs> He'll learn. <laughs> you know, you got to hand it to East Tech. I mean, it's a, a hot, humid night. It's long, and they're still out battling. Uh, you know, I mean, um, you got to figure the Devils have tried to wear them down, but the Scarabs have stayed in it. I mean, uh, if it wasn't for a, you know, a few mistakes here and there, it's, it's probably a closer ball game. Durgans is going to hand off to Garjula, who goes off tackle right, cuts it up. He's across the five, headed for the end zone. And I think he got it. And he's in. Touchdown, Wycliffe on a 13-yard touchdown run by number six, Vince Garjulo. And once again, Scott, it's, that, it's being able to read not only the blockers, but being able to read where the other guys are and, and make yardage for yourself. And he's done that a lot tonight. I mean, very, 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 very productive. In that, Absolutely, in that. Frank. And we said this at the top of the broadcast, you know, you were supposed to have seen more Vince Garjulo last season and the only reason you didn't was because of an injury right you know he was gonna he was gonna work into the mix there with the likes of chase fort camp and isaiah bolin right. and mason bala so and we're, now we're seeing why we're seeing the natural ability so i think uh, the blue devils line up for two here they're up 36 to 6 as it is durgans takes the snap he's gonna try keeping it himself around the right side and he dances into the end zone Easily gets the two-point conversion. I believe that's at least his second two-pointer of the night. So that means with 10.40 to go here in the fourth quarter, it's Wycliffe 38, East Tech 6.
You, you know, Scott, I, there's a rumor that uh, the band heard that there were a couple of Goombas up on the webcast tonight doing the fight song, so they decided that they needed to show us how it's done. They <laughs> said that was disastrous. Let the pros do it. So, so Frank, it was interesting. I'm watching the Wycliffe sousaphone section, all three of them. They've taken to uh, standing up and kind of jumping and twirling in a circle as they play the fight song. They've done that a few times and tonight. It is, it is a miracle that they've not run into each other. <laughs> Don't. Kids, do not damage those sousaphones. So, so Wycliffe once again to kick off. Sean Durgans has teed it up at the 40-yard line. And East Tech, as has been the custom tonight, has three back deep. Durgans is facing to the right side, and he will kick it over there. Low kick. It's going to hit it about the 30 and actually skip past the returner back to the 15. He picks it up, comes uh, to midfield, and it's breaks one tackle. Two again. That's number two. Breaks a second Still tackle. Still on his feet. And is finally met there by Jude Devaney and Vince Gargiulo and brought down he was, at the 35. They, they brought him down because they pancaked him. <laughs> they just grabbed him and pancaked him. And uh, that, this that crowd little was guy can go. <laughs> so he had, there were two shoestring tackle attempts on him that number two broke. And finally, Devaney and Gargiulo said, you know what, that's enough of this. And they bring him down to the point where the ball will be spotted at the East Tech 35 yard line. 9.20 to go. And the. The 30-plus point differential means we have the running clock with Wycliffe leading this one 38-6. to six. And we'll see what East Tech is looking to do here. But I would assume we're going to see a lot of gains. Gains throwing, gains, gains running, running. <laughs> break it up with, you know, some huff carries. And you got to follow number two. That's for sure. And, boy, Frank, I, I do wish we knew what his, his name was to give him proper kudos because he has been... Um, he has been a force for his offense tonight. This is the first time, Scott, that the um, Scarabs look a little gassed. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So speaking of number two, he's going to go out to the left side. He's going to line up in a slot left. There are three receivers to the left side, one to the right. Gaines has got Huff behind him. He's in the shotgun formation. He takes the snap. He's going to give it to Huff, who gets across the 35, brought down at about the 39-yard line. So a nice nine-yard, I'm sorry, four-yard pickup. That ball was started at the 35, so a four-yard pickup for Huff. Patrick Quinn credited with the tackle on that for Wycliffe. That's going to bring up a second down and six for East Tech at the Scarabs 39-yard line. As you just heard the percussion section of the band do that you know drum routine the same drum routine that always got me into trouble with my mother back when I was you know I'd always be trying to do that on the dinner table <laughs> percussion section leader Landon Smith the senior heading up the Blue Devil drummers this year there's a snap back to Gaines. He's going to throw it into the flat to Huff. He's got it at the 30 across the 35 40 gets across the 45 slips the tackle and finally brought down as he it was a bit elusive on, on, that, on, on that play. Absolutely. He's brought down by number 59, Shane Causey, who has an interception to his credit tonight and also gets that tackle. And that's going to be enough for a East Tech first down as the ball is put down at the Scarabs 46-yard line. So that was a pickup of about seven yards on that play. On the little swing pass to number 10, Jordan Huff. Coming on for Wycliffe on the defensive side of the ball is a number 40, and I apologize, we don't have a number 40 on our roster, but the Blue Devils are going to start subbing out here, I think, giving some younger and less experienced players a chance to experience the varsity level of play. So first and 10 for the Scarabs. Gaines going to take the snap, and he's going to take it, pull it down and run it. He gets across the 45 near midfield, brought down and around the 49-yard line. Looked to be a gain of about three yards there. And I think he, that was a design pass play for Gaines, who is actually down right now after being hit. Takes his helmet off, and he's going to need to be attended to. And it looks like Thomas Wentz is making um, uh, his way over to the sideline. A, a very successful night tonight, getting a um, nice bottle of water. Want to give a shout-out to our friend Rick Rambaldo in uh, Erie, PA who's checked in, and also Sherry, who's watching down in uh, North Carolina. Thanks for um, your support of the Wicklow Blue Devils on our Worldwide Blue Devil Network tonight. 
as um, it looks like we've got somebody being attended to by the training staff of uh, East Tech. That's the, that's the quarterback, Johan Gaines there, Frank. He took a little pop there at the end of that play and immediately took his helmet off and was in some degree of pain. So let's hope that young man is doing okay. But that means he'll have to come out, and I don't know that we've seen anybody else take a snap tonight for the Scarabs of head my, coach Daryl Forrest. My, my, my phone is vibrating. They're wondering if maybe I could do that. What, go play? Yeah, for East Tech. Heck yeah, you got some eligibility left, I think, right? With, with, with these 65-year-old rusted knees? Ah, uh, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. And thankfully, Johan Gaines is back up and walking up under his own power. So glad to see that. And he gained, he did indeed, as we said, gain three yards on that first down play. So just to set the stage for you, 6.14 to go here in this game. So we'll get an idea who will have to come in and at least for a play or so be the, I think number two is going to be the quarterback. I think he might be. They may just let him kind of improvise. Yep. So 6.14 to go. Wycliffe leading this one 38-6. to six. East Tech with the ball, second and seven. No, I, from I, th I think Huff's going to take the snap. Okay, number 10, Huff. And that ball's placed down at about the 48, just past the 48-yard line. A man in motion going. Actually, oh, somebody the, just coming on the field. Oh, I see. He's getting to his position. That, that's an interesting man in motion there, Scott, <laughs> like from the bench. <laughs> Deception play. That's right. So actually, number two takes the snap. He's going to try to find some room around the right side. Gets across the 50, across the 45. Breaks it over to the sideline. Spins ahead down to the Blue Devil 37-yard line. So that's a pickup of 15 yards for the Scarabs number two, whose name, again, we are lacking because we do not have a full East Tech roster. Our apologies for that. But that will, of course, be more than enough for a Scarabs first down. But the clock continuing to run. Five and a half minutes left in this one. And East Tech going to try to get up back to the line to make the most of the time they have remaining. So first and 10, East Tech. And it does look like number two is going to be taking the snap. Yeah, he and Huff are both in that backfield. A lot of time, you know, I wonder how, how long they're giving them on the huddle clock. Two takes in. He's going to tr try the left side across the 40, across the 35. He gets across the 30, cuts inside, gets across the 25-yard line, and knocked down there at about the Blue Devil 24-yard line. Oh, I think so there was a fumble. It looks like they're signaling. Or, 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 or. Well, in any case, it was, uh, it was a pickup of 13. And actually, you know, where they're putting it is the Wycliffe 26. So there may actually have been a fumble back a couple of yards, Frank. I think he may. That's interesting. Scott, Wycliffe has the ball. It was a fumble on the play. Oh, I apologize, Frank. We didn't, we didn't hear that. So possession does, in fact, go over to Wycliffe. So fumble on the play recovered by Wycliffe. And I think... Uh, we weren't fully aware of that. PA announcer Gary Willis only just now making the call. I don't think uh, well, the boys I, I, the I did see there. one of the referees point the other way, and the way the um, sideline uh, crew was is yeah. set up. Yeah, I figured it, it does look. There must have been a fumble on the play recovered by the Blue Devils because it was a it was a good run by the East Tech quarterback. So apologies for the confusion there, folks. It'll be first and ten. Wycliffe with three thirty nine and counting to go. Blue Devils have the ball, and there's a flag down in this one as the give goes right up the middle. I think that's going to they're going to be an illegal procedure. Motion, Motion on, Wycliffe. on Wycliffe. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's going to wipe out what looked to be a six or seven yard gain. And the clock will continue to run here. 3.15 to go. So at the rate things are going, it looks like the Blue Devils will successfully christen their brand new field. So ball placed uh, back just over the 20-yard line. Now under three minutes to go. First and 15 for Wycliffe at what they're officially calling the 21. Durgant's still in there. East Tech showing blitz. He's going to take the snap, and he gives it right away to Bonadio, and he is brought down immediately by East Tech's number 50. 
Chase Bonadio coming across, and the Scarabs defense sniffed that one out, Frank, pretty darn quickly. So Wycliffe just trying to see this one out with everyone healthy. They have it now second and 17. That's what it says on the clock. I don't think it's, I guess it is back that far. That, that, that ball back inside the 20. I'm not sure the, uh, the chain crew quite has the location of the ball marked correctly here, do they? Yeah. Okay, now he's adjusted. Scott, I think because this game has gone rather long, I think all of our brains are a little soft at this point. <laughs> My cookies and milk are going to spoil. Durgans is uh, letting as much time run off the clock as he can before he runs this play. And now we have a whistle and a delay of game on Wycliffe. So 1.43 to go. I think the Blue so Devils if, were if, okay if, taking that. Okay, if it's a running clock, why would they stop the clock well, on I the think penalty? I wonder, I don't know this, Frank, but I wonder if you can't intentionally delay even in the running clock situation. Number 78, Connor Forsythe, the six foot, 220 pound sophomore in along the Wycliffe line. Clock starts again, second and 22 for Wycliffe. There is a give and s smashed in the backfield is the Wycliffe ball carrier. We'll get a number for you. It might've been Chase Bonadio again, indeed it was. And poor Chase is doing his best to try to create some pos positive yardage, but uh, great penetration on the last two plays by the Scarabs defensive line. You know, at the rate the Blue Devils are going, at third and 22, they might be faced with their first punt. <laughs> they have not, in They've fact, not punted, punted tonight, tonight. That at is all. true. 57 well, seconds to go, third and 26 here. Ball back Something tells me that between this and the next play, they'll be able to run the clock out. So Durgans is going to wait, let time run out here. Watch I'm surprised they're not running up and basically lining up in the victory formation. Take the knee and... Well, interestingly, you know, East Tech could theoretically stop the clock, and now the delay of game penalty is called on Wycliffe. And in this case, the clock keeps going, Frank, so I think we had a little confusion last time. I think oh you were boy. right there. So 20 seconds to go. I'm wondering if we could get overtime. And Wycliffe's going to come out here, and that is going to be it in this one, Frank. So got a little confusing there at the end, but the Wycliffe Blue Devils able to see this one through. And that means your final score here in the very first game on artificial turf here at Wycliffe Memorial Stadium is the Wycliffe Blue Devils 38 and the East Tech Scarabs 6. And Frank, probably not much a much better way to, as you said, christen this brand new field at Memorial Stadium you tonight. Know, um, Scott, I agree with you. Before anything more, I'd like to wish the Scarabs of East Tech all the best as their season will continue next week. Um, you know, they came in and played hard the whole night, and we want to wish them nothing but the best as the Blue Devils put win number one in the books tonight, but with a final of 38-6. to six. So, Scott, we will hang here on the network as um, the swing band is making their way down into the victory area, and um, we'll be able to watch us do the Wycliffe High School alma mater and celebrate tonight's 38 to six victory with the team. Once they're done, can you know, doing the um, congratulations back and forth between the two teams. So this, you know, we've talked about this in the last few years, Frank. One of the great new traditions uh, after victories, where the band will get together with the football team and play the alma mater, and the uh, football players will hold those helmets up and sing the alma mater which uh, I don't know if they still have the tradition of having to memorize the alma mater in ninth grade English. I know we had to do it. One would hope. With Mr. Mr. T, Mr. Theophylactus. Mr. T. And you, boy, you had to punctuate it right. Or points were taken off. But that's to this day, Frank. I will never forget those, the words of the alma mater, that's for sure. And we're going to hear it here shortly. And he used to say, you lousy guy. <laughs> <laughs> May he Mr. rest T. in peace. Mr. T, oh, great peace. teacher. So...
don't know about you, Scott. I could never get tired of hearing the fight song or the Wycliffe High School alma mater. Absolutely, Frank. Anytime, any day. So, Coach Purcello and your crew, congratulations. Win number one is in the books by a score of 38-6. to six. Devils will be on the road next week as they will be um, facing, uh, you know, yet again another athletic team in Painesville Harvey, the um, Red Raiders. And um, we'll be back here. We'll be back here in a couple weeks, I believe, as the Fairport Harbor the Skippers, the, the Skippers, Skippers come in. Yeah, they'll be here. Yeah. Glad yeah. to see them salvage that program because yep. that's you know that, they had a playoff team last year. That's right. It's a, you know, good tradition there. Good small school football played out in Fairport Harbor. So, I don't know about you, but from last week to this week, definitely a step in the right direction. You know, I'm sure Coach will be saying that there's some things they they can tweak. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but, but they they learned a lot from last Friday to the performance tonight, and hopefully they can carry, you know, more improvement to next week against Harvey, and then we'll see what happens in two weeks when we're here back. We also want to congratulate our newest members of the Worldwide Blue Devil Network. We had Shane. We had Colin here. Colin. Is up here. Madison. Thank you very much for joining us. You know, we got... We've been wa wanting to get involved, some of the students from Wycliffe High School, so who knows, before too long, we'll hand you guys the headphones. And, and you guys, what's that? You want to do it? And I'll bet you they'll, Perfect. they'll sing the fight song better than we did. That's right. That's, That's my right. guess. As Absolutely. a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> uh, high school principals up here, probably, we probably have detention. That's, yeah, I think so. You've got to clean erasers so, yeah. or something after the, after the <laughs> ball game or whatever. So um, we're going to wrap it up at this point. I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight as your, your final from Wickler Memorial Field from high atop the ridge, the Wickler Blue Devils 38 and the East Tech Scarabs 6. Have a great weekend, and we'll catch you guys in a couple of weeks. Take care, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night.